The following is a class on the Bhagavad Gita as it is, 13th chapter, text number 5, given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded on August 13th, 1973, in Paris, France. Translation, that knowledge of the field of activities and of the knower of activities is described by various sages in various Vedic writings especially in the Vedanta Sutra, and is presented with all reasoning as to cause and effect. So, <coughs> about the soul and super-soul, uh, recently, great sages, friendly person, they have also discussed. Just like in the present age also, we are uh, different parties, the impersonalist and the personalist, the Sankar Sampradha, they ascertain the absolute truth as impersonal, nidvishesha. Uh, and the Buddhists, they ascertain the absolute truth is zero. Uh, we are struggling, nidvishesha sunnavadi. We are struggling against this Nidvishesha Sunnavadi, void is an impersonalist. <coughs> so it is not now new from time immemorial there are different views. Uh, but Krishna refers here with Brahma Sutra Padai, Hitumadvi Vinishida. Others, there are many other books of knowledge. Uh, they are not very uh, reasonable. That is dogmatic. But Hetu Magdhi, if we accept with our logic and sense, uh, that is first class book which gives us information of the Atma Parma. Therefore, in the Chaitanya Chaitamrita, the author says, Chaitanya Dayar Katha Karaha Vichar. Vichar Kodile Chitte Bhave Chavatka. Uh, the author says that you kindly uh, put your consideration and judgment about the mercy of Lord Chaitanya Maha. And if you Consider with logic and reason, vichar karile, pavi chitte chamatkar, you'll feel that these are wonderful things. So we haven't got to accept anything blind. The Brahma Sutra and Vedanta Sutra is called Naya Prasthan. There are three different processes for understanding the absolute truth. Naya prasthan, suti prasthan, smriti prasthan. The Brahma Sutra is Naya prasthan. Naya prasthan means everything, all the sutras and codes are there with full reasoning. Hetu madhvi vinishtita. And whatever Brahma Sutra says, that is vinishtita means ascertain. There is no doubt. Uh, just like Brahma Sutra says, Athato Brahma Jignasa, uh, Brahma Sutra says, now it is the time for <coughs> inquiring about the Absolute Truth. Now means uh, in this life, human form of life, or, just like in Europe and America, 
it is the time now to inquire of the absolute truth. Because materially they are advanced. They have seen all material advancement. The scientists are now perplexed that how we shall maintain ourselves, because we have nothing to give anymore. Whatever stock we have, we had, that is finished. Now they have simply to bluff. No more stock to give. They have given us motor car and atomic bomb and aeroplane and electronic activity. So many things they have given. That's all right. Simply they could not give us relief from birth, death, old age, and disease. The real problems are there. But they have given some superfluous. Just like this is also scientific improvement, microphone. But the microphone sometimes goes wrong. That does not mean I stop speaking. We can do without microphone. That is not a very great problem. Suppose science has given us motor car. That's all right. But sometimes without motor car we walk. Or there is bullock cart. The real problem which very much disturbing us that we, all of us, we do not want to die. But the science could not give us any formula assuring that there is no more death. That is not possible. So, athāta parma as I was talking, then in the Western countries, Europe and America, about forty years ago, sometimes in the year 1935-36, about forty years ago or little less, one of my court brother, German, his name still living, he is now in Switzerland. Uh, he is now he has taken the name of what is the name? Sadhanand. yes. His 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 real name is Sulje. Jan. So when he came to India in a meeting he said that uh, so far mystic power is concerned that we have solved by science. So we have nothing to learn about the mystic power. I have come to India to learn how to understand God and His service, loving service. So actually, and that is the position, forty years ago he said, so the Europe and America they have enough of material enjoyment. Uh, meat eating, wine, oven, uh, they have got sufficient. Uh, so they are not very much interested with all these things. Although, because they have no other alternative for enjoyment, so they are enjoying or trying to satisfy them, but that is not giving them real satisfaction. That's a fact. This wine, oven, and meat eating. Uh, that is not giving them any more satisfaction. But because they have no other alternative, what they can do? Puna puna charvita charmananam, chewing the chew, that's all. It is already chewed, it is already tasted, but there is no other alternative, therefore they are tasting the same thing, uh, this way and that way. Uh, <coughs> so their time is now, Thātva Brahma Jīgyāsa. Therefore, from India, any rascal comes as yogi and sadhu and avatar, they go, they are hankering after. Uh, we see practically this younger generation, they ask me sometimes, uh, why so many younger, younger generation uh, come to you? Yes, they are frustrated. They are no more interested 
to live like their fathers and grandfathers. That is, because that has become hackneyed. The same things. Same gambling, same meat eatings, same woman hunting and same intoxication, that has finished. So uh, when one has finished his material enjoyment, then the next question is Brahma Sankha, Athato Brahma Jigyanasa. They try to inquire about the absolute truth. That is natural sequence. Uh, therefore, uh, the Vedanta Sutra, the first aphorism is Athato Brahma Jigyanasa. Yes, that is natural. Uh, as you are, you young uh, boys and girls, why you are after me? Uh, the natural sequence is that now we have to inquire what is the next, because this material happiness has not given us any happiness actually. Uh, so when a man becomes civilized, when a man has enjoyed enough of the so-called material, the next inquiry is about the absolute truth. That is natural. That is natural. Because every living entity is a spiritual spark. He is not this body. Therefore Krishna has already explained. To understand what the khetragya, the knower of the body, and to understand what is this body, khetra khetragya, and who is the another real proprietor of the body, Krishna, Ketraga, Cha, Pi, Maang, Vidhi. So if one can understand these three things, Ketra, Ketraga, and the Supreme Ketra, even by common sense we can understand, it requires little cool brain. But that cool brain, uh, cannot act without giving us, giving up these four things, uh, namely illicit sex, uh, meat eating, uh, intoxication, and gambling. If your brain is congested always uh, with all these four rubbish things, you cannot think of higher, finer things. That is not possible. Uh, therefore, we restrict to make the brain clear to understand about Krishna. Parikhita uh, Maharaj uh, said, Vila Pasuna Nidvitta Tarasai Rupagiya Mana Bhavau Sadi Chutra Mano Virama Kautava Sloka Gunanu Bada Vila Jati Vila Pasuna Vila Pasuna These are the Shastra injunction. The meat eaters they have no brain to understand about the absolute truth. They simply speculate. They cannot understand. It's not possible. Uh, that is the Prakrit Maharaj says, Bina Pusugna, except the rascals who are accustomed to kill animals, all, everyone who will take shelter of the glorification of the law. Except these persons. Bina Pusugna. He says, Nidvitta tarasai rupagiya mana. Glorification of the Lord. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. It is chanted by the liberated person. It is not chanted by the conditioned soul. It is not possible. Therefore, not everyone can chant. You have seen it, experience, that you are chanting dances very in ecstasy, emotion. Others are standing without opening their mouth. They cannot chant. That is a very difficult job for them. Because it is the property of the liberated person, not for the conditioned soul. Therefore, Parikrit Maharaj said, Nirvitta Tarasai. Tarsai, Trishna. Trishna means hankari. Hankari. Just like if you are thirsty, you feel, where is water? Where is water? Where is water? That is called Trishna. So, Nibhita Tarsai means 
वन हु हैज फिनिश्ड ऑल हैंकरिंग फॉर मेटीरियल इज कॉल निर्वित्त कृष्णा निर्वित्त मीन्स फिनिश एंड कृष्णा मीन्स हैंकरिंग इस द सेम थिंग इज डिस्क्राइब इन दिस भगवत गीता ब्रह्म भूत प्रसन्न आत्मा न सोचती न कांखती 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 मीन्स इफ आई हैंकर दैट मैन इज स्टील आई एम हंग्री और थर्स्ट बट देर इज ए पोजिशन ब्रह्म भूत पोजिशन बाई ब्रह्म जी ज्ञान था दैट वी कैन गेट रिलीफ ऑफ दीज टू एक्टिविटीज हैंकरिंग and lament uh, the material world there are two things only uh, lamenting and anger those who have those who do not possess his anger uh, and those who have lost their lament but there are two things only uh, actually we do not possess uh, somehow or other if we possess that is also lost uh, just like we have got this body क्षेत्रज्ञ क्षेत्र क्षेत्रज्ञ क्षेत्र इज दिस बॉडी जो बाई हैंग करिंग बाई डिजायरिंग ई कैन गेट एनी टाइप ऑफ बॉडी देर आर एट मिलियन फोर हंड्रेड थाउजेंड्स ऑफ बॉडीज जस्ट इफ यू आर ई गैर टू गेट ए सर्टन टाइप ऑफ बॉडी और सर्टन टाइप ऑफ स्टैंडर्ड ऑफ लिविंग कृष्ण आई गिव यू जी तथा मांग प्रबंधनते भजाम हम बिकॉज हियर इट इज द बिजनेस कृष्ण बिजनेस इज दीज रेस्केस दिस कंडीशन सो दे वॉन्ट टू लॉर्ड इट ओवर दिस मेटीरियल वर्क एंड कृष्ण हैज टू सप्लाई दैट इज कृष्ण बिजनेस इन दिस वर्ल्ड सिंपली बोध अरे जस्ट लाइक सो मेनी चिल्ड्रेन एंड फादर is uh, put into difficulty one children wants father give me this another child says my father give me this give me that give me that and father being affectionate he has to satisfy all the children so krishna's position is like that therefore krishna comes being bothered by this rascal that he wants from me so many things but you are not happy Please, therefore, give up this business. Sarva Dharman Parita, Mami Kang Sarva. Just become, uh, follow me. You will be happy. Therefore, Krishna comes. Real solution is that Krishna consciousness. Therefore, the Vedanta Sutra says, "Athato Brahma Jigyaasa." Now you don't inquire for any other things. Uh, why should you? All other things required by you. That is already supplied. It will be supplied. Why you bother? You just try to understand the value of your life in Krishna consciousness. That is your only business. The seva he to prajati he to kovida. Kovida, those who are intelligent. The seva he to for that thing. Prajati he to endeavor. So try to get that thing. For that thing, nalab bhati jag bhrata amu par jag ho. Just like people are struggling, wherever you go, uh, material world, either you go to London or go to Paris or to Calcutta or Bombay, anywhere you go, what is the business? Everyone is struggling. Ho 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 ho. Day and night, the motor car going this way, that way, this way, that way. Uh, last night I was speaking with Sudar Kirti. Wherever you go, you see this nonsense thing. Go, 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 go. Any city you go, uh, the same road, same motor car, same hoosers, same petrol. <laughs> <laughs> What is this man? But we say this is called illusion. I have come to Paris. I have come to Calcutta. But what is the difference between Calcutta and Paris and Bombay? The same thing. Puna puna chori, bita chori va naana. Again and again, chewing the chew. That's it. Therefore, the Brahma Sutra advises. Now you have done this chewing the chew. Uh, so many lies. Chewing the chew means aharunidra bhayamai thunanchu. 
either your dog or your man. You have to make solution how to eat, how to sleep, how to satisfy your sex, and how to defend. The same problem is in the dog life, the same life problem is in the human life. Uh, same life is in the uh, demigod life also. Just like uh, our Bhagavan Das was telling me that in Paris they are living taxes twenty percent for maintaining the expenditure of atomic bomb. So we are simply creating problem. That's all. The so-called advancement of civilization means uh, the same problem. Uh, atomic bomb, what is that? Uh, defensing. Aharo nidra bhoya. Bhoya means fearfulness. Because we are afraid, either English or France or German, everyone is afraid. Just like a dog is afraid whether another dog is coming. So the so-called civilized men, they are also afraid whether Englishmen are coming to attack or the German. Therefore there must be atomic bomb, I shall throw. Therefore you must give me tap. The, these things are simply the trying to solve the problems of fearfulness. That's all. Defense. So this fearfulness is there in the dog, in the hog, in the small sparrow, bird, everywhere. You have seen this sparrow bird. Huh? As soon as you on the land, want to eat something. He's afraid. Huh? It's, it's not somebody coming to kill me. This. Everywhere. In the aquatic also. Uh, everyone is afraid for life. But Krishna has given, given them different types of defensive measures. Uh, it is learned from the Shastra that the fish. Uh, they can, uh, by, by the waves of the water, they can understand that few miles ahead there is enemy. They can understand. Uh, and they become immediately defensive, how to protect. Because this is struggle for existence. I want to eat you, you want to eat me. Jiva uh, jiva sajivanam. This is going on. So everyone is afraid, everyone is taking defense. Even the tiger is also afraid. Do you know that? Tiger is also. Tiger has become a very powerful animal. Everyone is afraid of. He can catch anyone and kill him and eat him. Unfortunately, he does not get the opportunity of catching anyone. <laughs> the tiger cannot eat every day very nicely. Uh, he gets once in a week a chance or once in a fortnight a chance to capture an animal. Uh, therefore he kills and keeps it uh, for eating daily. It is not that just like you are getting daily uh, Bhagavad prasadam, nice dish. Nobody is supplying to tiger. Nobody is going to tiger's uh, prawn, sir, kindly kill me and eat. No. Nobody is going Everyone uh, uh, has got to struggle. Nahi suptasya sinhasya pravishanti mukhe mriga. This is the statement. In this material world is so bad that even the lion, if he keeps himself sleeping, because lion is considered to be the king of the forest. So if he thinks that I am the king of the forest, so why shall I work? Let me sleep. And my eating animals will come and enter into my mouth. No. You have to struggle. You have to struggle. You have to find out. Therefore, this energy is called uh, karma sangha anna. Uh, this, there are uh, uh, many energies of oh, Krishna. Prasa Shakti Vividhai Vasriyate. But Learned scholars, they have divided into three. The spiritual energy, the marginal energy, and the material energy. Titya, karma sangha, anya, titya, shakti, rishyate. So here this material world, either you become a tiger, either you become Lord Brahma, or you become a small ant. You have to struggle for your existence. This is material world. You cannot think 
that I shall be happy without any work. People are trying uh, to do that, that when a man gets some money in bank balance, he no more work. Uh, but that is the tendency, that without working I shall maintain myself happily. That is our tendency. Anandamaya Abhyasa, Vedanta Sutra says, because our tendency is to enjoy life. But we do not but we do not know where to enjoy, how to enjoy. And that is called illusion. We are trying to enjoy life in this material world where there is no enjoyment. There is no enjoyment. Uh, repeatedly, Shastra said, Krishna said, Dukhalayam asasatam. This place is simply for miserable condition of life. Dukhalayam asasatam. And still it is temporary. Even if you think, all right, there are so many miserable conditions, never mind. Uh, let me adjust and live here permanently. Oh no, that is also not here. Temporary. You may decorate your Paris city, uh, Napoleon tried and other tried, but you cannot live here, sir. You have to go out. But these rascals do not understand. Uh, they decorate, decorate. Uh, tax, give more tax, give more tax, let us decorate. But how, will, how long you shall live in this decorated city? Uh, uh, even if you live, if you are so much lover, great nationalist uh, of the country, suppose next, next life you get the... Uh, because when one has very much attraction for a certain land, uh, then he again takes birth in that land. So if you take your birth not as human being or as a cat and dog or a cow, then you will be sent to the slaughterhouse. Then what is the use of your becoming nationalist? Your man for whom you have worked so hard, next life, if you take your birth as a cow, the same man will send you to the slaughterhouse. But these last cases do not know what is the mystery. Therefore, to make solution of this problem, athāta brahma jīgyāsā. Now inquire what is the absolute truth. That is intelligence. Uh, therefore Krishna, although He is Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, He is giving reference to the <coughs> Brahma-sutra. Uh, whatever He speaks is all like. He doesn't require to refer any authoritative book. Uh, but he is also giving. You have seen Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That is the way. But these rascals are trying to avoid authoritative scriptures. Even Krishna is giving reference to the authoritative scripture. And these rascals, they have so degraded. They said, oh, why this book? Now I can manufacture my own knowledge. And other rascals are accepting. Yes, it is right. So this is called Kali People are so degraded, less than animals, less than animals. Therefore to revive them, the Vedanta Sutra says, Athāta Brahma Jiddāsa. Now we inquire. The following is a clause on the Bhagavad Gita as it is, 16th chapter, text number 13 through 15, given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupāda. Recorded on February 8, 1975, in Honolulu, Hawaii. The demoniac person thinks, So much wealth do I have today, and I will gain more according to my schemes. So much is mine now, and it will increase in the future more and more. He is my enemy, and I have killed him. My other, men are, my other enemy will also be killed. I am the Lord of everything. I am the enjoyer. I am perfect, powerful, and happy. I am the richest man, surrounded by aristocratic relatives. There is none so powerful and happy as I am. I shall perform sacrifices. I shall become. I shall give some charity, and thus I shall rejoice. In this way, such persons deluded are deluded by ignorance. <coughs> Ida Maya. Love
इमं प्राप्से मनोरथम इदम अस्ति इदम अपि मे भविष्यन्ति पुनर्धनम असौ मया हत शत्रु अनिश्चय च अपराण अपि ईश्वरो हम अहम भोगी सिद्धु हम बलवान सुखी आठो हम अभिजान अभिजा अभिजना जनवान स्मी को अन्य अस्ति मदृशो मया जखी दाशा मोदिश इति अज्ञान विमोहिता so last night we discussed about the demons thinking asha paasu sati badhya he does not know that so long i shall be uh, aspiring more and more i am getting entangled more and more within this material world uh because krishna is so kind he has given me freedom to enjoy this material world but according to my work i am become I mean implicated uh so long i will have a pinch of desire for enjoying this material world i will have to accept the typical body this is the law of nature uh, when you will actually be uh, free from all material desires then it is called mukti <coughs> mukti liberation that is liberation that that standard of mukti mukti standard or mukti platform is bhakti yoga no desire does not mean uh, no desire for serving krishna that is real desire other desires are artificial that is material but the desire to that is called krishna consciousness uh, when all our desires are for serving krishna desires you cannot give up that is not possible uh, desires will remain there but at the present moment in the conditional stage the desires are being misused that is the defect <coughs> therefore the definition of bhakti means anna vilasita sunnam sunnam means zero that is called nirvana the buddha philosophy advocates nirvana Uh, no more desire. That is that pleasure. By desire, you are becoming implicated. So uh, make all your desires extinct. Then there will be no more feelings of pains and pleasure. Uh, Desirelessness. <coughs> but that is not possible desire must be there because i am living there living being i must have desires that is the symptom a stone has no desire but a living being have a small insignificant and it has got desire the insignificant and gets information then in the other corner of the room which is 100 miles for the in uh, i'm mean this ant because the world is relative 
relative word. So this length of the room from this corner to the other corner for an ant, it is hundred miles. Yeah. Because the world is relative. According to the size, <coughs> atomic size, uh, the distance. Uh, now we have got speed aeroplane. The distance has reduced. Distance from Honolulu to India, if you go by land, it will be 10,000 miles. But it is 10,000 miles, but the uh, speedy aeroplane has reduced. Hmm. So relatively, everything is relative. This is called relative world. Dong, uh, what is Professor Einstein, he has proved the law of relativity. So the ant, he has to go to pick up one grain of sugar by going hundred miles in his capacity, but it will go. That is desire. Uh, you have got experience. You put little sugar here. You don't invite ants, but they will come. They will come. They will get immediately information. Just like uh, from Europe, many people came in America, gold rust, desire. So desire must be there. The ant has desire. Lord Brahma has desire. I have got desire. You have got desire. This is artificial to make desire less. <coughs> that is not possible. Uh, Therefore, bhakti means to purify the desire. That is bhakti. Annavilāsitā uh, sunnam. Annavilāsitā sunnam jñāna karmā dhanā vidam ānukullīna krishnāna silanam bhakti yuttama. Tat paratyena ninmanam sarvapādhi vinin muktam. I am desiring now with upadhi, designation. I am Indian, I am desiring in a way. You are American, you are desiring in another way. Similarly, a cat is desiring in another way. The dog is desiring another way. Everyone has got desires. Different types of desire. Child is desiring some way or other. Uh, the boy is desiring another way. So uh, the desire is on account of this body, defined desire. Uh, so when we become uh, transcendental to the bodily concept of life, then we come to the spiritual platform. In that platform, the only one desire is how to serve Krishna. That is required. Not to become desireless, but to purify the desire. That is bhakti. Sarvapādhi minin muktam tat paratina nirmalam. Nirmalam means without any dart. Cleans completely, crystal clear. That is required. The senses will be there. The mind will be there, the intelligence will be there, I will be there, everything will be there, but uh, we have to cleanse the desire, purify the desires. Asha, Pasa, Sati, Vadha, here the demons, they are also desiring, but Vadha, they are becoming conditioned. But a uh, Devotee, he is also desiring, but is mukta, means liberate. Uh, therefore, in the Bhagavad Gita it is said, jagyārthe karma annatra karma bandhana. You work for, uh, perform means sacrifice. Uh, perform means sacrifice. Sacrifice. Jagga. 
yagya means to satisfy the Supreme. That is sacrifice. I sacrifice my own uh, convenience. I take all kinds of troubles. There is no trouble. It is pleasure. Uh, just like the mother takes all kinds of troubles for the little child. But she does not think that is trouble, that is pleasure. When you do something out of love, that is pleasure, that is not trouble. Then the uh, transcendental platform, devotional service, uh, uh, anything you do, that is pleasure, uh, that is not trouble. Uh, just like you are dancing here, uh, actually bodily, there is some trouble because you are perspiring, but you are not feeling the trouble. You are feeling pleasure. Otherwise, how you can dance? This is the uh, transcendental platform. So the demons are bound up by material desires, and uh, the devotees Apparently there is desire, but there is no bondage. This is the difference. There is no bondage. Sarvapādhi vinin muktam tatparatyana nirmanam. So the mahavādhi philosophers, they cannot understand. They are thinking that why these people are taking so much trouble dancing, Jumping, they cannot run. Therefore, they feel displeasure. Uh, they feel disturbance uh, because they are not purified. Uh, so, asa paso sati vadhya. The demonic principle is to become bound up by their desires. Uh, but if you on the uh, spiritual platform, then all your desires means loving service to the law. That is what. So the demon's desire is described here. There is nothing to be explained. We have got practical experience in the material world. They are always thinking, Isamadhamayalabdham. Now, today I have earned five hundred dollars or something more or less. Madhavdham means I have got it. Imam prapse manoratham. Again, I shall get tomorrow so much money and my bank balance will be increased to such and such times. Idamasti, I got so much and so much will be added and the balance will increase. Idam me bhavishyati punardhanam. In this way I will increase the amount of my wealth more and more. There is no question of how much. Love I have increased for Krishna. And that is bhakta, bhakti. But where there is no bhakti, they are thinking of this material uh, increase. Aso maya hato. Thinking others are enemy. Actually, in the higher status of life, uh, a devotee uh, does not think anyone as any. Sama sarvesu bhūteshu madhvakti lavati parā. Sama. He knows that nobody can become my enemy unless Krishna desires. 
Why should I think of him as my enemy? Krishna has desired him to act as my enemy just to correct me, just to make me more advanced in spiritual life. So why shall I take any action upon him as enemy? Of course, this stage is meant for very highly elevated devotee. That is not meant for ordinary devotee. Uh, but the fact is this, how one can become my enemy? If I am Krishna's servant, uh, how one can become my enemy? If one is acting as my enemy, it is Krishna's desire. I have got some defect and he is correcting me. Therefore it is called samasarvesu desu madhavakti lavati para. That is the topmost devotee's conception. But when we are preaching, uh, we have to come to the second stage. There are three stages of devotional life. The first stage, uh, or the lower stage, the middle stage, and the top stage. So this kind of conception, the nobody is my enemy, that is on the topmost stage. That is not to be imitated. Uh, when you are preaching, you have to come to the middle stage. Even if you are on the top stage, you have to come on the middle stage because you have to discriminate. Here is a devotee, here is a demon. Uh, on the top stage, there is no such thing as demon and devotee. Uh, the top stage, the uh, devotee sees everyone is engaged in Krishna's service, simply I am not engaged. This is topmost devotee's vision. That I am lacking Krishna's devotion. Uh, just like Radharani thinks that all others, they are engaged in Krishna's devotion. But I could not. Uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said that I am not a pinch of devotion to Krishna. Uh, then if you say why you are crying, that is to make a show. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, uh, that I am crying for Krishna just to advertise myself. Uh, that I have become a big. But actually I am not a pinch of devotion to Krishna. Uh, no, you are so great devotee, everyone says. No, everyone may say, but I am not. Why you are not? No, because without Krishna still I am living. That is the proof that I have no love for Krishna. This is Chaitanya Mahapushta. If I had any drop of love for Krishna, how I could live so long without Krishna? Sunna itam jagat sarvam govinda virahinavi. This is love of Krishna. That how can I leave? Uh, separation from Krishna. Uh, this is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's uh, philosophy. And the Goswamis followed them. Uh, they never said that, uh, now I have seen Krishna. Uh, never said. The Goswami, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also <coughs> Say that I was dreaming, Krishna, why you got me awakened? I lost the chance. But the Goswamis, uh, they said that He Radhi Prajadevi Kisha Lalite, He Nanda Sunna Kutaha, Si Govodhana Padavatali Kalindibhone Kutaha. 
गोसंतामिति सर्वतो ब्रजपुरे खेदई महाव्यूहलो बंदे रूप सनातन रघुजुगौ श्री जीव गोपाल देव एंड सिंपली फीलिंग सेपरेशन वृंदावन दे लीव बट दे नेवर से लास्ट नाइट आई सॉ कृष्ण वॉज डांसिंग नेवर से दे से कृष्ण गोपीज राधा रानी वैर यू आर ऑल हे राधे ब्रज देवी के चल लीते हे नंद सुन कृतवा वैर यू आर कालिंदी बोने कुत गोवर्धन पाद बतले आयदर आंदी नियर दी गोवर्धन ही और ऑन दी बैंक ऑफ दी रिवर जमुना वेर यू आर दिस इज कॉल भजन डिवोशन इन सेपरेशन फीलिंग सेपरेशन so in this way we shall increase our aspiration uh, more and more uh, that is required that asha that hope that expectation will lead us to the topmost platform of devotion so instead of uh, thinking always like these demand that i have got so much money now i shall get um, further amount of money and it will be like uh, so much money he is my enemy uh, i have killed one of them the other enemy this is going on actually in the material field so we have to rectify you uh, have to rectify a uh, doham obijanasmi i am the richest man uh, i have got so many friends all aristocratic obijan obijanova uh, janova dhanova uh, dhanova means possessing wealth and janova means possessing men um, uh, strength uh, popular strength uh, um, strength of money चैतन्य महापुरुष है जगदीश काम है दिस आर दक्ति पापॉन इज थिंकिंग आई हैव गॉट सो मच मनी आई हैव गॉट सो मेनी फ्रेंड्स एंड सो मेनी रिलेटिव सो मेनी फैमिली मेम्बर्स चैतन्य महापुरुष इज डिनाइ द न धलांग न जनंग न सुंदरी कवितांग म जगदीश काम जस्ट द ऑपोजिट आई डोंट वॉन्ट एनी मेटीरियल फ्रेंड्स और फॉलोअर्स नाइ दर आई वॉन्ट मनी सिंपली आई वॉन्ट टू सर्व यू सिंपली आई वॉन्ट टू सर्व यू सो इन दिस थ्री भारत एवरी थिंग इज what meanings are there uh, so these are the uh, demonic propensities and the very thing can be changed into devotional service and then we become uh, devotee or demigod so uh, i am going tomorrow so here You shall try to become devotee, uh, not to think like demons. That will not help us. Then asha pasha sati bodhya will remain uh, bound up uh, in material bondage. You cannot stop desires. Uh, that is not possible. But purify the desire. Uh, Purify the desire. Purify desire means that the same hopes, hopes again, hope, uh, just to improve your position as devotee. 
that will help you to make your life. The following is a discourse on the Bhagavad Gita as it is, 16th chapter, text number 17 through 19, given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded on June 28, 1976, at the New Brindavan Farm Community. Chapter 16, text number 17. Atma Sambhavita Sabda Dhanamana Madan Vita Yajante Nama Yagyaiste Tambe Na Vidi Purvakam Translation Self complacent and always impudent, deluded by wealth and false prestige, they sometimes perform sacrifices in name only without following any rules or regulations. Modern yogic society <laughs> transcendental meditation. Whatever nonsense they like they do. In the Bhagavad Gita it is stated the yogis sit down in a secluded, sacred place. And they are seeking after America's big, big cities. Hmm? They find out yogic class in America's big, big cities. Hotels. Is that one? The prescription is that one should sit down in a solitary, sacred place, alone. And these rascals are holding class. All smokers, drunkards, woman hunters, <laughs> they're yogis. Hmm? What do you think? Is it all right? This is right. And they're accepting, yogi, this, yogi, that. In India they cannot find out, because people are not so full as yet. Then in big, big cities, in big, big hotels, yoga practice. India, although so far, they have not accepted. They land at once, detect here is a rascal. But here, Dhamma Mano, they are qualifying, they have got money. So whatever they accept, that is all right. Because they have got money. No other qualification required. They have money, they can pay. We did that. Dhamma. Atma sambhavita stabda dhana mana madanvita. What are the word meaning? Atma sambhavita, self complacent. Whatever they think, it is all right. That's all. They are not going to hear any authority. <coughs> Whatever they think, that is fine. That's fine. Why? Stabda. Hmm. Impudence. No obedience to authority. Impudence. And? Dhanamana. Dhanamana. Because they have got money. Whatever they think, that's all right. And there is gurus also will say, yes, it is all right. The guru says that it is not all right, so nobody will come to him. He has to say, it is all right. We 
because he's also after money and all that. That's all. He does not come here to teach something. This is going on. Therefore they come in so many numbers. They have now taken a good field. And in America you go, you say any nonsense and they will accept. And pay money for them. From the very beginning, it is going on. Now, because it is going on like that, we are also counted among them. It is folly to be wise or ignorance is bliss. This is a difficult. They are also taking this movement, all oh, these boys are chanting and dancing, this is also another sentiment, another edition of hippie movement. <coughs> that, again, I think, Grasam Sivari. Bad money drives have a good money. You know this? Yes. This is economic theory. Bad money drives have a good money. Because nowadays bad money that Paper money is going on. That gold coins no more in existence. Formerly we have seen gold coins in our childhood. We have not seen anything. We have seen. Collector's items. Huh? Collector's items. Collector? Only if someone may have one just as a collection. You can't get them. Formerly in the currency, when you go to take some exchange, it was the etiquette of the teller to ask you what you want, silver money, gold money, or paper money. Then it was your duty. If you say, I want gold money, they will pay in gold money. Not only it is written in the paper, I promise to pay, but the promise was kept. If you once give me payment in gold, they will pay. And now, to keep gold, holding gold is illegal. Mm. So you cannot ask. This is why. Legalize cheating. You have to accept this paper money, that's all. Don't ask for God. There is no honesty at all. I can take paper money for my convenience, eh? but how you can force me to take paper money? That is not honesty. So dishonesty begins from the government. You cannot keep gold. If you have kept gold, there will be searching, 
And if it is found that you have gone, you will be punished. And India is now being done. There is no freedom, even at your home, in your private life. Parvani, any common man could keep gold. According to his desire, there was no such thing. Sometimes he would hide it hidden within the ground because there was no bank. At least in India this was a practice. If you have got some gold, you keep it somewhere confidential within the ground so that it may not be stolen. So everyone should have right to keep his money as he likes. Why government should interfere? That's when you see the Bhagavatam. Hmm? Rajanna Dasudharuna. The government man will be like rogues and thieves. By law they will take care of it. It is now going on in India. I think here it is also. <coughs> they cannot keep going. Why? I cannot kill gold. If I have secured gold, I can give it. I want gold, you will write, I promise to pay, so there must be gold coin. I must have. So many difficulties will come in the kingdom of Maya, gradually. It is already come. The eight items, what are the items? The twelfth canto. Uh, duration of life, mercifulness. No, no, that is not. Hmm? Symptoms of the age of coming? Yes. Duration of life is decreased. Hmm. If one is twenty years old, he will be a grand old man. Hmm. That is coming. Bodily strength, Bodily strength increases. In smriti, intelligence, yeah. remembrance yeah. decreases. <coughs> Daya, dharma, religious things. Everything will be reduced. Yeah. And the government man, instead of giving you protection, they will act like thieves and rogues. You cannot say anything. Very, very precarious condition. All freedom lost. In Russia, all freedom lost. They have no freedom. The professor giving that uh, testimonial, well, don't publish it. They are appreciating this book, but they cannot say that is good book. Just see what kind of freedom is there. A nice book I appreciate, I cannot give in writing. The American government would say, how can you say that there's no freedom when the uh, First Amendment of the United States Constitution says that there is freedom of religion. One can make any religion he likes and follow. How they can have it? By simply by writing, by the government, man, that's how it becomes a law. There's no question of its validity. Maybe because it is spoken by government, that for the and other words, the government man should be so honest and so elevated that actually their words should be law. But it is democracy. Any nonsense can take vote and go to the government. And then whatever he will say, that will be wrong. Who cares that he is a rascal, somehow or other, he is 
is gotten bored and he is in a position who is considering that. And in the Vedic age, only the first class, brahmanas and sages, they would it. Manusangika. That is law. Not that any rascal goes into the legislative assembly and passes some law. Of course, whatever government says, that is law. But what is the position of the government now? Assembly, everything. The yogi is actually worshipable. But what are these yogis? Let's say. Hmm. Dhana means money. So if you have got money, then everyone will respect you. Personally, you may be a less than a dog, but because you have got money, people will respect you. Is it not? <laughs> in England, <laughs> I was guest in John Lennon's house. He has taken a photograph naked. <laughs> and he is a big man. He gives opinion to the newspaper reporter. People go there to take his opinion about some serious subject. And he speaks. And the man is so shameless that he is standing naked and he is important. Because he has got money. Especially in the Western country, this is very prominent. If you have got money, then you have got everything. Therefore, they are after money only. That if somehow or other, if I get money, then I get everything. I get respect, I get honor, I get everything. Bring money, somehow or other. This is that time. Therefore there is so much hard struggle. From early in the morning, four o'clock, they are going to the office to get money. To get more money, more money, that is the Western civilization. Now in India they have also learned. And our philosophy is don't try to get money. You should simply engage your life for. Um, <coughs> advancing of Krishna consciousness. So who will hear us? We say there is no need of uh, working so hard for money. Nayang deha deha bhajang niloki kastan kaman arhati bir bhujan. This kind of working hard is done by the hogs and dogs. So why a human being should work so hard simply to get the necessities of life. This association, this meeting, this talking is meant for the human body. It is not for the cats and dogs. This is human civilization. When we are on the meeting going off, all the big, big planet, Brahmin sages, they are talking how to do welfare activities to the human society.
What is this civilization? Simply money, 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 money. And as soon as you get money, then you begin all nonsense. It is it sex, meditating, drinking, gambling. What do we do with the money? Do not know how to spend it. Thinking themselves all in all, not caring for any authority or scripture, the demoniac sometimes perform so-called religious or sacrificial rites, and since they do not believe in authority, they are very impudent. This is due to illusion caused by accumulating some wealth and false prestige. Sometimes such demons take up the role of preacher and mislead the people and become known as religious reformers or as incarnations of God. They make a show of performing sacrifices and they worship the demigods or manufacture their own gods. Common men advertise them as God and worship them and by the foolish they are considered advanced in the principles of religion or in the principles of spiritual knowledge. They take the dress of the renounced order of life and engage in all nonsense in that dress. Actually, there are so many restrictions for one who has renounced this world. The demons, however, do not care for such restrictions. They think that whatever path one can create is, one, is one's own path. There is no such thing as a standard path one has to follow. The word avidipurvakam, meaning disregard for the rules and regulations, is especially stressed here. These things are always due to ignorance and illusion. Hmm. Next text. Hmm. Text 18. Ahan karang balang parapang kamang krodhang chasang srita mamatma paradeheshu radveshanto yasu yaka. Translation. Bewildered by false ego, strength, pride, lust, and anger, the demon becomes envious of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is situated in his own body and in the bodies of others, and blasphemes against the real religion. Purport A demoniac person, being always against God's supremacy, does not like to believe in the scriptures. He is envious both of the scriptures and of the existence of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is caused by his so-called prestige and his accumulation of wealth and strength. He does not know that the present life is a preparation for the next life. Not knowing this, he is actually envious of his own self as well as of others. He commits violence on others' bodies and on his own. He does not care for the supreme control of the personality of Godhead because he has no knowledge. Being envious of the scriptures and the supreme personality of Godhead, he puts forward false arguments against the existence of God and refutes the scriptural authority. He thinks himself independent and powerful in every action. He thinks that since no one can equal him in strength, power or in wealth, he can act in any way and no one can stop him. If he has an enemy who might check the advancement of his sensual activity, he makes plans to cut him down by his own power. To the Papa, in this purple, you mentioned that uh, not knowing that this life is a preparation for the next life, that one actually becomes envious of his own self. Yes. If he's going to become a dog next life, and if he does not take precautions, then he is not envying himself. In this life you are Prime Minister, and next life you are preparing to become a dog. 
So, what did you use up? So, becoming Prime Minister. You, you could not save yourself. Nature's law will go on. You may become Prime Minister or any minister. But the law will act. If you have infected some disease, so the disease will develop. It doesn't matter whether you are Prime Minister or this minister. These rest cases, you do not know it. Karanam guna sangha asya sata sat janma joni su. Find out his wife. This low-grade birth, high-grade birth, why it is happening? Karanam guna sangha asya sata sat janma joni su. Purusha prakriti sohi bhukte prakriti jan gunan haranam guna sangasya sadasad joni jan mashu. The living entity in material nature thus follows the ways of life, enjoying the three modes of nature. This is due to his association with that material nature. Thus he meets with good and evil amongst various species. The practical saying it that <coughs> material nature some infection, this is also material nature. And if you are infected with some contagious disease, you must suffer this, practically see it. The nature will work. Purusha prakritasya. As soon as we are in this material world, I am living entity, spirit soul, because I am in this material world, I have accepted this material body under the regulation of the material laws. Otherwise, why there are so many varieties of life? Here is a tree. Eh? It is standing here. We are human beings. We are also here. But when there is cold blast, scorching heat, we can go into the room, but if he has to be standing here for thousands of years, why this distinction? He cannot move even an inch. It is also living entity. Why he is punished in that way? And when there is snow fall, pinching cold, you cannot go. But a small ant, it can go from here to there. Moving and not moving. Two kinds of living entity. Some of them can move, some of them cannot move. Savara. There's a grass. We are trampling over with our legs. It cannot protest. Why these differences of grace of life? This is described here. Purusha prakriti sopi bhungte. What is that? Enjoy. Bhumte prakriti jan gunan. Because this prakriti nature is made of three more samatriya nature, satagun, rajagun, tamagun. It's like we are trying to associate with satagun. No illicit sex, no meat eating, no gambling. The others, they are not anxious for you. They will say, what is wrong there? You can do that. But because you are infecting the karma bone, you have to suffer. You have to become a tree. You have to become a dog. How you can stop it? Where is your science?
Why the scientist dying? Why they cannot invent some means, a tablet? That at the time of my death, push this tablet in my belly, I will not die. Why they are unable to do so? Who can answer this? Why the rascal scientists do not manufacture such things that there will be no death for the scientists? Hmm? What do you say? Anyone for scientist can plead? <laughs> hmm. They want to do it, Prabhupada, they cannot. And that is complacence, what is called. Yes, in future we shall do. That's all. When at present you cannot do, then you are imperfect. Why you are declaring yourself a scientist? Scientist means who is in full knowledge. That is scientist. And if you are not in full knowledge, how you are scientist? Big, big scientist, big, big belly, silent jumping, melancholy. Gaskell says that chemical, combination of chemical makes life. So we challenge that we begin from an egg. Everyone sees the egg, some white substance, some yellow substance, covered with some cell. Just manufacture it and give it to the incubator and let the chicken come. Why you take the egg from another living chicken? What is the answer? You rascal, you make one small egg. We can see there are some white substance, yellow substance. So you combine some chemicals, white and yellow, and cover it with cellular cell and put it under the cover and get. Why the rascals cannot do it? And still the rascal will say the life can be is combination of chemicals. Give this challenge to this rascal. The life is, if it is combination of chemicals, why don't you do it? The simple thing. Yes. I was reading the other day where they have uh, certain kinds of scientists who do nothing but uh, make uh, tastes out of chemicals. They say they can duplicate any taste, and they're very highly paid now uh, for making synthetic foods uh, taste like uh, all other kinds of real foods. Yeah. And they'll not produce food. They're not producing the food, yeah. <laughs> This way they're getting high salary. And we have to pay tax for that, yeah. income tax. <coughs> that means rogueism. We have got money, government to take it and pay these rascals. Scientific research. And there are so many foundations in your country. If you ask them, give us some money for Krishna Council. No, 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 we don't pay for anything. We pay to the scientists. Now they're going to Mars. Hmm? Now they're going to Mars planet. They have two uh, ships heading for Mars and they want one to land on July 4th. Okay. It has already started? Yes. Now they've given up on the moon, now it is Mars. And the fools are paying for that. Yeah. Millions of dollars. Just see, one attempt has already failed. Again, they are looking at it and spending it. Isn't it possible for them to reach Mars because it is a hellish planet? Who says it is a hellish planet? In Bhagavatam. 
in, it's described as inauspicious in third canon in the story of Rahu. Hmm. Maybe. So, first of all, let them go. They cannot go according to our calculation, basic calculation. And the moon is above sun planet. And the Mars is above moon planet. Mm. So they would have to go past the sun. Huh? So they would have to go past the sun. No, no. First of all, they, <coughs> according to their calculation, 93 million miles. So the moon is above 1,600,000 miles. And again, 106,000 miles. So another 3 million miles above the sun, it becomes sixteen million miles. So if they cannot go to the sun planet, how they can go to the Mars? You are bogus. So a scientist on television he was saying that on Mars there are mountains that are very, very big, much bigger than the mountains on this planet. In this beautiful landscape, and they want to start a tourist industry, taking people there, back and forth. Hmm? <laughs> they want to start a tourist industry on Mars, taking people back. But there is no life. <laughs> they already sold the tickets to the moon. Now they're going to go on to Mars. <laughs> they say there is uh, less advanced life, like uh, plants. Why? Not more advanced life. According to their speculation, they say that the uh, atmosphere is... But that means speculation. Well, they have uh, a system, so-called system, by using light. No, no. We, we find there are two kinds of living entity, Sabar and Jango. One kind of living entity, they cannot move, and one kind of living entity, they move. So, just like here, there is grass, there are trees, and there are, we are also. There are many animals who can move. So why, if there are plants who are not moving, why not the other moving animals? This is common sense, is Everywhere we see two kinds of uh, animals, moving and not moving. If the not moving is there, why not the moving? What is wrong there? This is our first question. They say that in, under certain conditions, just like in... No, those don't, don't find such conditions. There is a rascal love. We don't find such conditions. Anywhere you go, there are two kinds of living entities, moving and not moving. One of, one of the ways they, they tell or whether there are advanced forms of life is if they can see vegetation growing on different planets in waves, like you see them. And if they can't see that in an orderly pattern, then they feel like there's no life, no advanced life. Or, or uh, Why there is no vegetation? They say vegetation. there is vegetation. They say uh, very like lichens. Lichens are... That means not yet certain. Yeah, they, they admit they're not certain. Yeah, misleading. According to that report that we read the other day, they uh, had good information now that the atmosphere was uh, water and ice, like that. So they were expecting to find some signs of uh, life. And they were going to land the spaceship in a canyon that was just below the equator, just at the mouth of the canyon, and it's four miles deep, and 50,000 years ago it was filled with water, <coughs> so they're expecting to find fossils there now. <laughs> They've never been there, though, speculation. <clears throat> they don't, never take into any consideration that there can be another form of life, except other than that, which they know. No, that's speculation, but 
Why people are victimized by this calculation? That is the amazing thing. They have already failed in one speculation. They went to moon planet with some speculation that is failed. Why they are giving chance? Another speculation. Everyone believes that they went. Huh? Everyone believes that they went. They went, but what is the benefit? What part they went? For scientific exploration. They consider that very noble. Scientific exploration at the expense of this taxpayer. They consider it a very noble cause to increase knowledge. Mm -hmm. That is the same story that some uh, frogs were there and children were throwing stones. Then the frogs appeared and said, Why are you are throwing stones? Now we are playing. So you do what is play for you, it is death to us. So <laughs> these rascals are playing and we have to pay heavy tax for them. Mm. This is going on. So we are playing, making scientific research. And who will pay for that? You. You work hard in the factory and pay tax. This is really. You pay tax and we spend it as you like. People ask you. Very well. This is the government of Kaliji. What can you do? Mm-hmm. What is play to you is death to us. Mm-hmm. Never mind you die, we play. They have already spent so much money, moon exploration, and that is stopped now. No benefit. And they brought some sand and some rock satisfied. Again, the same thing with mass. But we can say from our poor knowledge that as they have failed in the whole planet, they will fail us in the mass. Take it down, not down. <laughs> Do we know this is all black? Los Angeles papers, they quoted you saying that, that they didn't go to the moon. Hmm? They quoted you as saying this in Los Angeles in the newspaper. <laughs> also your Monday, Tuesday, Sunday, Monday. They put that in the newspaper. Nobody can answer you. The common sense. Can any one of you answer why Sunday first and Monday next? <laughs> you are one of the scientists, why do you answer? <laughs> and this common science question, why Sunday first and next? All over the world. In the human society, everywhere you go, they will say Sunday first, Monday second. In India, huh? Ravi Bar. Ravi, Ravi means Sun. And Sombar. Sombar means Monday. The planetary system is so arranged. First of all, sun, then moon, then Mars, then Saturn. Saturday, Saturn is last. Even Sarup Damodar has not answered. 
not meet the challenge. <laughs> Any scientist here who can answer why Sunday first and Monday second? scientists, but I always thought that the ancients believed that the sun was first because without telescopes or without light measuring instruments it looked, it was bigger and it looked closer. That's the plan. Sunday is first. And Monday moon is beyond sun. Because if they accept the Nordic they can approach sun and how they can approach moon. And calculation, <coughs> 18,000 miles per hour, and if the moon is situated at 95 million miles, then how they can go in four days? These are my questions, they have not been answered. It takes at least seven months. And they went in four days. And the, the man's mother, his photograph was there. She said, Oh, at, at last my son has gone there. You have seen that photograph? I have seen. Mother was satisfied. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Text nineteen. This is the result. These rascals, atheist class, they will suffer in this way. That is what described now. Kripāme ajasram asubhān āsorishu evajonishu Those who are envious and mischievous who are the lowest among men, are cast by me into the ocean of material existence, into various demoniac species of life. This is the reason. What is that explanation of the variety of life? They say due to evolution over many millions of years. Stronger. Hmm? The strongest somehow they survive and other weaker species they become extinct. And they say the origin of species is genetic. They say somehow or other. Hmm? Right. Say somehow or other. Is that science? Somehow or other. If I say somehow or other, you will become a dog. <laughs> what is wrong there? If things are taking place somehow or other, so I say somehow or other, you will become a dog. Our explanation is complete. They accept somehow or other is a means. So this is Somehow or other, you are going to be a dog. How can I deny it? If that is your position, things are taking place somehow or other. So how can you deny somehow or other you will become a dog? 
Hmm? They will say that we have seen that these other things are taking place. But then Vishnu says, somehow or other, this argument cannot be. Nothing happened somehow or other. We don't believe that. Here is because Tarahang Vishakura, Chipami, Agasam, see that? Tarahang Vishata Kururan Sangsareshu Naradhaman. Chipami Ajashram Ashubhan Asorishu Eva Yonishu. Hmm. What is the meaning? Uh, tan, those, aham, I, dvishata, envious, kluran, mischievous, sangsareshu, into the ocean of material existence, naradhaman, the lowest of mankind, kshipami, put, ajashram, innumerable, ashubhan, inauspicious, asorishu, demoniac, eva, certainly, yonishu, in the womb. There are so many varieties of life. So we have to accept one of them by Krishna's desire and Krishna's arrangement. Krishna says, Krishna Sarabhutana Mridde Sarjuna Sistati. He is situated in everyone's heart, he is observing everything. So he orders that give him a body like this. Who can check it? Brahman Sarvabhutani, Jantra Rudhanima, this body is a machine. The machine is given by material nature. So today you may be a very big man. And by your activities, asuric activities, you are so condemned that you have to accept a lower grade life. A fox, sly fox, you are very sly eh? to spend others' money in moon excursion. Now you become a fox. So who can take it? Here it is telling, Tanaham Vishuddhakura. So you cannot take it, you are not so great scientist. So how do you say there is no God? You cannot check God's law. How can you say that there is no God? You can say at your home, I don't care for government. And when government arrests you and puts you in difficulty, how can you check it? Is it possible? Then why do you submit there? When the police comes and arrests you, you can say, no, I don't care for any God. You cannot say. So what the atheist will answer this? Krishna says, I'll put him into this condition. What the atheist will answer? They say there's no experience of anyone taking an expert. There's no experience? You have got disease? Do you want disease? You still you, are, you say you have no experience? When you are put into some disease and go to hospital and the doctors um, surgically operate your body, so you have no experience. You did not want that. Your fertile brain, <coughs> when it is operated with hammer, so you did not experience. 
How do you say that we have no experience? We are suffering every moment. But you don't want suffering. How do you say that there is no experience? That is foolishness. You are suffering every moment. Adhati, Adi Bhauti, Adi Bhauti. Still you say you have no experience? Means shameless. In Indian language you call Behaya. He has got repeated experience. So still he will say, no, I don't have it. How does he have experience of rebirth? Apart from that, that we have to take. Because you are put into difficulty which you do not want. This is your experience. So the intelligent man's question will be that I did not want this, but who has put me into this condition? That is intelligent. Well, they say there's no, for suffering, there's no divine cause for that, that's just a material cause. Whatever it may be, you did not want, you have it. Against your will. This is your experience. There is no difference, either you say material cause or spiritual cause. Mm. But you are suffering, whatever you do not want. That is the point. You are somebody, and you did not want it. Nobody wants any uh, distress, but it comes. How it comes? means without any endeavor. Who is trying that let there be fire in my house? But it takes. Nobody wants that there may be fire in my house. But there is fire, therefore we have to arrange for fire brigade. You are expecting always some danger. Therefore, you make so many precautions. Because you know the all right do not want mishappenings. It will come. Nobody endeavors for mishappenings, but you know there is some superior force who will enforce mishappenings. And they are unable to counteract. Just like a scientist knows that he will die. But he's so expert scientist that he cannot counteract. He knows that he will die. The following is a lecture given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded on October 18th, 1975, in Durban, South Africa. There are two classes of men throughout the whole universe. One class is called Daiva and the other class is called Osura. Daiva Asura Daivi Vistara Saprokta, so far the devas are concerned, Krishna has explained in various ways in the last chapters. Ahinsa, Kanti, Adhavam, how to practice these things. <coughs> Mm-hmm. <clears throat>
Vishnu Bhakta Bhavit Daiva Asurasad Vipadja. These two classes, how they are asserted. One he is devotee of the Supreme Lord, Vishnu. They are called Daiva or demigods. And persons who know Vishnu or may not know, on the whole, they are not devotees of Vishnu. Even they are devotees of other demigods. They are called Asura. Just like Ravana. Ravana, he was a great devotee of Lord Shiva. But he is described as Asura, Rakhasa. Similarly, Hiranagasipu was a great devotee of Lord Brahma. Still he is accepted as Rakhasa. So unless one is Vaishnava, a devotee of the Lord Vishnu, he is Asura or Rakhasa. This is the instruction of the Shastra. But modern days also, practically nobody is devotee. So how they are described in the Bhagavad Gita, they are described as duskitina murha naradhama maya parhitagyana asuri bhavas. These asuras also divided in so many classes. The first class asura is the duskitina, one who is engaged in a sinful, meritorious action. Uh, sinful, meritorious. He did just like a big thief. There are many organizations of smugglers, black market, thieves. They have got brain to organize. Without brain they cannot organize. Uh, now in the Western countries there are big, big organizations simply for smuggling, cheating, and bluffing, and very good brain, uh, educated lawyers. Oh. I have seen practically in New York these cheating concerns. There are many lawyers to help them how to cheat. And they make arrangement, take money from one, cheating. Many organizations. They are called duskriti. They are educated. They have got good brain. They can act very nicely. Eh? But their intelligence is being used for sinful activity. They are called duskriti. <clears throat> they do not know how they shall use their brain. That is why. That is Jaravidya. Maya Vaibha. They can expand the influence of Maya. We are already influenced by Maya. Prakriti Mohini We have taken this material world as very fascinating, very attractive. We want to stay here and enjoy. This is material life. Everyone who is attracted to this material world, they are sinful or fallen. Krishna bhulya jiva bhogavan chakare. The our material life begins. We are spirit soul. When our material life, when we try to uh, deny, try to not serve Krishna, but Independently, we want to enjoy life. That is called material life. Independently, we want to enjoy without Krishna, without God. That is called material life. So, uh, such persons are called demons. So the symptoms of demons. Krishna says, Daivi Vishara Saprukta. Uh, I have already spoken 
elaborately about the uh, persons who are uh, daivi, who are on the platform of demigods. Now, prutta asuram pātham is sinu. Now I am describing who are the osuras. Just try to understand. The first symptoms of Asura is, it is said, prabhittiṃca nivittiṃca janāna vidurāsura na saucaṁ nāpi ca āchāra na sattaṁ teṣu vidyati. Very nicely described. The first symptom is prabhitti and nivitti. Why we are in this material world when it has begun that the Asuras do not know? Sometimes they ask that why we have come to this material world, we are suffering, we can understand. Or sometimes they say God is unjust, unkind, that they have created this material world and we have been put into it, so on, so on. But actually, this uh, pravitti, this intention or this purpose of enjoying this material world is not given to you uh, by God. We have created. Uh, God's desire is that you become a devotee. Sarva dharmān paritajya māmi kaṁ saranaṁ That is God's desire. But you don't want it. Uh, we don't want to stop the tendency of material enjoyment. No nivitti. Uh, the human life is meant for nivitti. The cats and dogs' life is for pravitti. The sex desire, they cannot stop it. It is not possible. Uh, if you teach some dogs that you forget the sex life, it is impossible. It is not possible. So they cannot stop this uh, desire of such life. But if a human being can be induced, therefore there is Brahmacharya system, there is basic education, there is Bhagavad Gita, so many other things. If people take advantage of this both, they can stop this pravitti. This is, uh, intense desire for enjoying this material world. But the Asuras, they do not know so what we should accept and why, what we should not accept. Parvitti means to accept something and nivitti means to deny something. So they do not know. This is the first symptom of the Asuras. Parvittiṃca nivittiṃca na vidu Prabhittimcha nivittimcha jana na vidura na vidu asura. Asura jana, those who are demons, asuras, they do not need. Then, next symptom, na saucham, that very unclean. These things we will find nowadays everywhere, all over the world. They are not clean. The cleanliness is next to godliness. To rise early in the morning and cleanse yourself, evacuate, then take bath, cleanse your teeth, cleanse your hands, legs, and be refreshed. That is required. Saucham. Suchi. This is the Brahmana's business. There's a Brahmana's another name is Suchi. And one who does not observe the cleanness process, he is called muchi, means cobbler. So this is the symptom that the asuras, they do not know which way is their goal of life, na sauchang, they are very unclean, na sauchang, na pi ca achara, 
they do not know etiquette. Uh, achara. Achara means one should learn how to behave. That makes a gentleman and a rough person. Na bhicha achara. Achara means achara, acharjavan purusha veda. Achara, this is achara means he learns from the shastra how we should live. The preliminary that you must take bath, you must wash your hands after eating, or you must take bath after evacuating. So many things are there. Nitya karma vidhi. In the Vedic literature you find, find all these directions, but now they have given up. Uh, especially uh, Vedic uh, culture was not was there long, long ago all over the world. But now that is finished. Mm-hmm. Now in India also, where little Vedic principles are still growing, that is now being finished. Nāpi-cācāra. They are learning from the Westerns how to remain unclean, how to eat meat, how to drink wine, and so on, so on, so many things. Nāpi-cācāra. Nā satyaṁ te vidyate And they do not know what is truth or what is truthfulness. Uh, or in other words, everyone is liar. For I have seen many big, big gentlemen that for nothing they will speak lies. For nothing. Without any profit. They will speak so many lies. Nasatangteshu Vidyati. To become truthful is one of the Brahminical qualifications. Sattam. That is required. But the asuras, they don't care at all. They will go on telling lies, bowling supplies. They don't mind for it. These are the symptoms. Now, sautamu nāpi cācāra, no sattaṁ And their life is aimless, not actual life. Real life means with aim. The asuras, they have no aim. They do not know what is the aim, neither they follow. Then other symptom, asattamma pratishtham, te jagadāhu anishyaram, aparaspara sambhūtam kimannat kāma hetukam. Their other philosophy is that there is no God. Jagadāhu anishyaram. As soon as you say the God has created the cosmic, material world, the sky, God has created, they will laugh at you. God has created. Why you bring God? Someone is telling me that in some scientific conference, they first of all warn that don't bring God in any of your statements. What is that? Do you know? So these asuras, there, First business is how to convince people that everything has taken place by accident or by combination of matter. There is no question of accepting God the Creator. That's all. What is that? Eh? So, asattam apratishtam. And the so-called sannyasi, because they are atheists, uh, they say that asattam, this material world, is uh, māyā, it is, it has no truth, uh, what you are seeing, it is illusion, uh, asattam. Uh, uh, but we do not say like that. We say, as we learn from Bhagavad-gītā, we say, the Krishna says, bhumi rāpa analo bhāyu khaṅgamana buddhireva ca bhinnāme pakiti astadhā. Krishna says, they are my prakiti, my energy. 
bhumi rapana uh, because it is krishna's prakriti uh, uh, just like i am a person i can create something very good and i can create something not very good but i can create something not very good just like another practical example i cook something and some of the preparation people say oh it is very good and some of the preparation they say it is not so good but it is nice but you cannot say any of the things as mitha that you cannot say you are practically eating and somebody has prepared it so how you can say it is mitha it is false no that is not our words uh, you can say that is also according to test uh, you like some sour things another like some sweet things so the person who likes sour things he says oh, it is very nice and one who likes Uh, sweet things, he may say, no, it is not so good. This is very nice, very sweet. But either the sour or the sweet thing is prepared by the same cook. You cannot say it is false. It is the energy of the same cook. So you cannot say it is false. So this is a uh, false. When the Mahabadi Sannyasi say that jagad mitha. Uh, Jagadahu Anishana. There is no God. The Buddha philosophers they say that this Jagat, this world has come into existence by combination of matter. The modern scientists also say. They say that chemical evolution, by combination of chemicals, everything has come out. But there is no creator. They will deny this. This is the symptom of the Osura. So From this instruction, you can understand who is a rascal and who is. As soon as they say that there is no God, the world is created by chance, mm-hmm. by chance, or paraspara bhutam, or paraspara, one thing mixed with another thing. Uh, how the example? The example is ki manlat kama he to come. This day. Uh, a man or a woman, by chance, they become lust, lusty and have sex, and the woman becomes pregnant, and the child is coming. Uh, just like this is a creation, accidental. Accident. The man or woman becomes lusty accidentally, and there is sex, and therefore the creation of the child. This is the theory. Uh, not that. This child is a living entity, and he is coming from his last birth, and he is taking particular type of body according to his last birth. No conclusion like that. God is the judge. What kind of body he should get? Dayvana, dayvana trina, karmana, dayvana trina. There are so many things behind this child birth. Why he, this child is coming? To a poor father or rich father, if it is accident, why one child is suffering, one is not in very comfortable position. So there is behind so many things, but they do not know because they are osura. They think it is accident, or there is no life. Kill it. If you feel botheration, then kill it. Finish this business. These are the asuri conclusion. Jagadhau an asattam. Aparthistham, this is false. They say that uh, this jagat mitya. So we have nothing to do. Uh, Brahma sattva and Brahma sattva. That's why. But uh, we say, we Vaishnav says that the jagat is created by Brahma. How it is false? Uh, how the sattva can create a sattva? That this, this logic they cannot understand. Uh, he, the man who has created, who has man, who has uh, cooked so many nice things, say if he is a fact, then the cooking is also fact. How you can say the cooking is false? 
That is not knowledge. Therefore, sometimes we find that although they say it is mitha, jagad mitha, and take sannyas, and for some days they remain meditation or aloof from any worldly affairs. But later on, when they do not find Brahma, they come again to this Maya to open hospitals, schools, and sunlancy. Just like in your in our country there are many. The beginning we see that Vivekananda Swami, he took sannyas and and meditation. And later on, after his touring in the Western countries, he came to India to open hospitals, schools, schools like that. So if the world is false, then why you are coming to open school and hospitals? Because they could not get and some other sannyasi also. He is now taking part in politics. If Jagat is mitya, why you are taking uh, part in politics? These questions are there. But actually they do not know what is what, what is the adjustment. Uh, but our philosophy, Vaishnava philosophy, we don't say that there is no God or this world is created by accident or no combination of matter. We don't say. We say that uh, God is the creator. The, not we say, but the Vedanta says, the essence of Vedic knowledge, Vedanta philosophy, Vyasdev, uh, uh, he says that janmādhasya uh, the source of janma or creation, the maintenance and alienation, the source uh, where it is jato mani bhūtāni jāyanti, this is Vedic information. That is Brahma. Where from everything is coming. The same thing is said in the Vedanta Sutra. Janmadasya Jataha, Athata Brahma Jigyasa. So Janmadasya Jataha, that is explained in the Srimad Bhagavatam. What is that Janmadasya Jataha? The original source of everything. Uh, what is that? It is a matter or a living uh, being. Uh, but the two things you have got experience. Uh, even we see that everything is coming. Uh, suppose this microphone, it has come from matter. And actually it has not come from matter. It has come from the living being who has manufactured it. But we foolishly concluding that it is a combination of matter. Who has combined this matter to make it usable? Uh, so this is less knowledge. That this is combination of several parts of material things, and it is working. Uh, but who has manufactured those different parts of the electronics and other things? That is not, uh, has, it has not come out all of a sudden from the sky. It has been manufactured by some living entity. Uh, so this is knowledge. Uh, so Janmadha Sajata, the atheist class, the so-called scientists, Osuras, they say it is a chemical combination by accident. We don't say like that. We say the Janmadas of the original source of everything is a person. Janmadas Jataha, Annayad, Itarateshu, Artheshu, Abhigya. Just like this microphone, if I say, he accidentally all the material things, electronics, parts, mixed together and became a No, we don't say that. We say this is manufactured by somebody who is very expert in dealing with these parts. That is our knowledge. Janmādhasya jataha annayāt itarato śīva artheśu avigyā. The person who has mixed together these different parts is very expert. That is life conditions. And if you, as a rascal, if you say that all of a sudden the material parts, there are many parts, they become assembled. Just like one lusty man, because accidentally had less desire, 
and the woman also becomes the inner. It is not like that. Uh, it is not like see that. There is brain. Uh, so every creation has got a brain behind this. Therefore, it is said, Avitya Janmatna Satyata Annayat Itarata Sthartheshu Avitya. That Avitya is God, Krishna, uh, one who knows things, how to do it. So in this way, if we study, then the asuras, their symptoms are described. So, hmm, uh, asuras are condemned. Uh, they cannot have any happiness. They simply go on theorizing. There is no solution. Uh, so one has to become uh, deva. Vishnu uh, bhakta bhavet deva. If we remain asuras, rascals, then our life is spoiled. Thank you very much. These qualities um, that you were talking about, um, so charm, uh, yeah. do they develop naturally? If you practice as that described in the Shastra, then gradually you become released from the Asura stage and come to the Deva stage, then you understand everything like And if you keep yourself as Asura, then you will never be free. The uh, statement here is that um, material world is founded on lust. This is the Asura conception. So uh, everything... The Shankha philosophy is also like that. Yeah. So this lust, uh, the godly qualities come from Krishna. Mm-hmm. The godly qualities, they come from Krishna. Everything comes from Krishna. Even the Dimaniya qualities? Oh, yes. Krishna is the origin of everything. Aham sarvasya prabhava. When Krishna says, I am the origin of everything, so the demonic quality is also coming from Krishna. So if Krishna is... Jijathavāṁ prapaddhāṁ. If you want to become a demon, Krishna will supply the quality. You become first class demon. Without Krishna's help, you cannot become even demon. Hmm? It is said, Sarvasya Chahum Ridhishanni Vishnu. I am situated in everyone's heart. Hmm? Sarvasya Chahum Ridhishanni Vishnu. What do you get by while I speaking, taking photograph? I repeatedly ask you. You are obstinate. What do you get a special feature when I talk? You take photograph? Oh, I ask you every day. You take Not during while I am talking, don't you? That disturbs me. My attention goes to your photograph. It is very much disturbing. So, Krishna is the origin of everything. So in this hastra, it is described just like the my front portion and my back portion. So the back portion is also my bodily part, and the front portion is also my bodily part. So asuric propensities and irreligious things, they are just like Krishna's back push. Darkness. This is darkness, material energy, uh, is called uh, mamamaya. The material energy is keeping everyone in darkness. But Krishna says, the vidyesha gunamai mama maya. So these, the, the, the darkness is another side of the light. Because there is light, there is darkness. Darkness there is no independently. You can understand darkness because there is light. So light and darkness, huh, they are uh, simultaneously there. And everything is Janmada Sajata, everything is source is Krishna. Uh, so, but 
Krishna, the darkness cannot act on Krishna. It acts on you. That is the difference. Just like uh, we have uh, discussed this verse, apasat purusaṁ purnam māyāṁca jat apāsrayaṁ. The sunlight used just stand before the sun, facing the sun, immediately there is darkness behind me. So darkness is there. But when you keep sun in your front, there is no dark. So darkness is also another creation of the light. Uh, but we are put into the darkness. The sun is not put into the darkness. Uh, the darkness behind me uh, is uh, captivating for me, not to the sun. So those who are devotees, those are facing the sun, Krishna, for them there is no darkness. But those who are asuras, they are put into the darkness. So darkness is temporary uh, and it is uh, dependent on light. Therefore, uh, it is creation of Krishna. That is the point. When Krishna steals or does anything, we glorify him because he's absolute. Yes. So in Maya bodies, they say that the living entities are also absolute. Is that correct? No, that is the wrong thing. If Maya body is absolute, again, jiva is absolute, then why they have become conditioned? Eh? Why? What is the answer? They're dependent on some higher absolute. Yes. Yeah. Is it possible for one person to be part demon and part devotee in the same person? If he's a devotee, he's not demon at all. It is devout. He may have some demonic qualities. Yes. That, if he is seriously devoted, that demonic qualities will disappear very soon. Kipraṁ bhavanti bhavanti dharmātmā apite sudurāchāra vajate māmananda sādhurīva samanta kipraṁ bhavanti dharmā. Just like electric fan is moving and you make the switch off, still you will find it is moving. But that movement will stop very soon because switch is off. Similarly, a devotee, if it is sometimes found that he is demonic, uh, that demonic, if he is sincerely a devotee, that demonic qualities will go very soon. Kipram bhavati dharmātmā sasakshānti nigacca kontya pradiyāni hi namē bhakta pranasya. So if, he, if one is strongly a devotee, then gradually it may take little time, all good qualities will be manifest in his body. Uh, any other question? Does Krishna know because he's sitting in everyone's heart? Do you know when says that the Supreme Lord sits in everyone's heart of Arjuna and he's directing the wandering of all living entities? So uh, does, he, does he know when when the living entities are going to surrender unto him? Hmm? The question is if Krishna is sitting in everyone's heart hmm. and he, he knows the wanderings of all living entities, he's hmm. directing the wanderings of all living entities. Hmm. Then does Krishna know the time, or does he direct the living entity uh, at some certain time to surrender, or is this the will of the living entity? He knows. Yes, he knows. What is your? Is there a doubt? No, no, there wasn't a doubt. But no, what is? Because the 
What is he dying? He knows. Do you know that? He knows that he will surrender. But when he will surrender, then that question must be there. That is is explained in the Bhagavad Gita. Mami Mujapadante Maya Me Dang Taranti. He knows that he'll be happy provided he surrenders unto. Otherwise not. That he knows also. Is it all right? He knows that as soon as he surrenders unto me, he'll be free from the clutch of someone. And he knows it also. If he does not do so, then he will never be free from my. Both things he knows. Is it clear or not? But it's the living entity's choice to surrender. Yes. He knows everything. But then they give the argument that if he knows, mm. then how does the living entity have choice? Hmm? Yes, that is given to him. He knows that I have given him the independence. So you can use your choice that he knows also. Yatecha sita thakuru. He knows. This is understanding things in proper life. Yes. Yes. See, the argument will come that if he's directing the wandering of all living entities, then I don't have to worry about surrendering. He'll direct me to it. Yes. Yeah. Why don't you see other verse? He is directing according to your desire, unless you surrender. There are two kinds of direction. One kind of direction is when you do not surrender, and one kind of direction when you have surrendered. Because these things are there. My position is either surrender or not surrender. So the not surrender will get one kind of direction and the surrender will get another kind of direction. Both ways there is direction. Without his direction he cannot act. Is it clear or not? He gives direction to both of them. But this both, one who is surrender, is a different person from the person who is surrendered. So they, both of them, get different direction in different position. But without his direction, he cannot act. Either the surrendered or not the surrendered. He has to give direction. So if you think, my Lord, send me to the hell, I will be very much satisfied. All right, you go to hell in this way. This is the path. And if you say, My Lord, uh, kindly take me to your shelter, then you'll give direction. You come in this way. Dejang satatujitanang bhajatang priti purvogam dadami buddhi jogam tam jena maam upajintite. He says, Tesam satadudu juktana, anyone who is twenty-four hours engaged in serving the Lord. Bhajatam, this is called bhajan, always engaged in Krishna's service. Bhajatam, please with love and faith. To such person he gives a direction. What is that direction? Buddhi yogam dadamitu. I give him that buddhi yog. What for? Jenamam upajantite. By the process by which he is anxious to come to me, I give him this. Yes, come this way, we come to me. And those that are not devotees, they want to uh, eat and sleep and sex life and defense in different types of bodies. The dog is also defending with his uh, claws and teeth. The tiger is also defending, the man is also defending, and man is also has sex life, or the tiger has also sex life, the dog has also sex life, the dog is eating, the man is eating. In these affairs they offer, give me this facility, my Lord, 
I want to eat everything without any discussion. All right, you take the body of a hog and you eat too. This direction. Je jathamang prabhadyante tang tathayiva bhajami ham. So, as you want, so this different types of want is different type of people. If demands want is different, and a demigod's want is different. But Krishna in both cases is the director. If he wants to prosper in this line, all right, take my direction, do it. You become a first class human like Udana Kashipu, Ravan, and become very powerful. And create a situation by which both you and your whole family will be killed. That direction is there. And to a demigod devotee, his direction is he goes back to home, he plays with Krishna as cowherd's boy, he, he dances with Krishna as gopi, he becomes Krishna's father, Krishna's mother. Clear it. Is it clear or not? Krishna gives direction according to the person he wants. If he wants like a diva, Krishna will give you very good direction how he can become a first class diva. And if he wants to become an associate of Krishna, divine, then he will give you first class direction how he can become so. But without his direction, he cannot go in step forward. That you are dependent in both the cases. You are not independent. You are dependent in both the cases now as you want. Whether you want to become a demon or whether you want to make a devotee and make progress in that line. That is your decision. Is that clear? Yes. <coughs> Krishna. Um, even if we don't surrender to Krishna in this life, we will eventually surrender to him, each and every one of us. Will everyone, even if we don't surrender to Krishna in this life, will everyone surrender to Krishna? Will everyone go back to Godhead eventually? Hmm? Okay, you have got doubt? Hmm? I rest assured, not everyone will do that. So you have no reason. It is not that everyone will do that. Therefore Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, Eirupe Brahmana Brahmite Kuno Bhagavadi. Unless one is Bhagavan, very fortunate, he will not go back to home, back to the He will rot here. So this Krishna consciousness movement means we are trying to make people Bhagavan. If he wants, he can become Bhagavan. That is our attempt. We are creating so many centers. We are teaching how to become Bhagavan, fortunate, how to go back to home, how he can be happy. Now if one is fortunate, they will take this instruction and turn his life. Therefore this is mission. But without becoming Bhagavā, nobody can go. Fortunate. So we are giving them chance to become fortunate. This is our mission. The most unfortunate is getting the chance of becoming fortunate. Any one of us can consider this. How from unfortunate life they are coming to fortunate. This is Krishna consciousness moment. That we are giving chance to the unfortunate. Everyone is unfortunate. Everyone is a rascal. We are giving chance and how to become intelligent and fortunate. This is Krishna consciousness. If the people are not so unfortunate and rascal. Then what is the meaning of preaching? 
preaching means that we have to turn the rascals and unfortunate to become intelligent and thoughtful. That is it. But unless you are fortunate and intelligent, you cannot take to Krishna. That is a fact. Everyone is intelligent, that I have already explained. Everyone has got brain and intelligence, but he has to use it properly. That is what, that is education. You cannot uh, teach a stone how to manufacture this microphone. That is not possible, because he has no intelligence. But even one is dull brain, you can teach him by education, how to manufacture this mind. So intelligence is there, every living entity. Now to train them, how to utilize this intelligence. So one who is fortunate, he becomes trained up in intelligence, how to go home, back to home, back to God. And one who is not in, uh, fortunate, his intelligence is used how to go to hell, that's all. That is duski thing. To become a member of the hellish condition of life, that also requires intelligence. How to become first-class thief, how to become first-class cheater, first-class drunkard, first-class mangler, does it not require intelligence? It requires intelligence. But their intelligence is being used for going to hell. Another intelligence is being used for going back to home, back to home. The intelligence is there in both the cases. Now it is the technique how to use it, that's all. That requires. So duskritina, those who are simply engaged in sinful activities and utilizing intelligence in that way, Namang prapadvante, they cannot surrender. So the intelligence is there, everything is there, senses are there. there. The following is a class on the Bhagavad Gita as it is, 16th chapter, text number 1 through 3, given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Recorded on January 29th, 1975, in Honolulu, Hawaii. The Blessed Lord said, Fearfulness, purification of one's existence, cultivation of spiritual knowledge, charity, self-control, performance of sacrifice, study of the Vedas, austerity and simplicity, non-violence, truthfulness, freedom from anger, renunciation, tranquility, aversion to fault-finding, compassion and freedom from covetousness, covetousness, gentleness, modesty, and steady determination, vigor, forgiveness, fortitude, cleanliness, freedom from envy, and the, pas and the passion for honor, these transcendental qualities of son of Bharata belong to godly men endowed with divine nature. Sri Bhagavan Ubacha Abhayam Satta Samsuddhi Jnana Yuga Babasthiti Dharang Namascha Jagnascha Sadhaya Stapajabam Ahinsha Sattam Akrodha Stagar Shanti Rapishanam Daya Bhuteshu Aloluptam Ardamam Ki Achapanam Tejachamadhiti Shocham Adroho Natimanita Bhavanti Sampadam Dvibhim Abhijata Sabharat. The first thing is that Bhagavan Ovaj. These things require for purification. Sattva Samsuddhi. Uh, 
the human right is meant for satta. Satta. Satta means existence. We are existing. <clears throat> I am existing, you are existing. Uh, but we are sometimes appear to be not existing. That is called death. We, every living entity, we are eternal. That is stated in the second chapter that aja nitta aja nitta sasat na hannati hannamani sarire. These things required to understand that I am a living being, not only I am, everyone. We are eternal, nitta, sasat. The, there are so many universities all over the world and so-called scientists and philosophers, but they do not know that we are eternal. They see their knowledge, advancement of knowledge. <clears throat> eternal, aja. There is no birth. Na hannate hannamani sarire. After this destruction of this body, I am not finished. I still exist. What is the destruction of this body? <clears throat> that means, it is a machine. It is called machine. Jantra uh, maya. It is a machine given to me. Uh, just like you take a car, that's a machine. Now somewhere or other, if the car stops not working, does it mean that you are finished? No. I can take another car. Uh, this is knowledge. But this knowledge is like uh, people are being educated, but they are all rascals because they, they have no the simple knowledge that ajo sasatayam, I am ajo. How it is ajo? Proof? Yes, there is proof. Uh, how I am eternal? If somebody asks, the high how I am, don't move this body. How I am eternal? There is proof. And who is giving the proof? Eh? Krishna, Bhagavan, Ovaj, the highest authority. Not ordinary person or any living being. Krishna. <clears throat> Krishna su Bhagavan Sayam. Krishna means the supreme personality of God. He is saying, he is giving the proof. What is that proof? Dehi nasmin jatha dehi kaumaro jyumanangajara tatha dehantara prati dhirastattana vayati. Dehi na, I am, dehi, dehi, this is body, is deha, body. But I am not this body. You think of it. Uh, if you take this finger, you study, am I this finger? No, the conclusion will come, it is my finger, not I finger. Simple little knowledge required. How? <coughs> now Krishna gives this example that dehina asmin dehe jatha dehina kaumara jovanang jara. Uh, he has explained in different way. The beginning is this, that this body is changing. Uh, you had a small body, baby's body. Where is that body? If I say, where is that body, what do you answer? But you know that I had a small body. I know everyone will know. But where is that body? Uh, the body is not existing. I was also a young man like you, and now I am an old man. Old man means my body is different, old body. Your body is different. 
So Krishna giving this very nice example, as the baby is changed into a boy, a boy is changed into a youth, a youth is changed into a old man. So this changing is going on. But I or you, we know that I have such body. I have several times spoken to you that in my, when I was about six months old, I remember, uh, I remember I was lying down on my eldest sister's lap and she was knitting. I still remember it very vividly. And so many things I remember. But why is that body? lying down on the lap of uh, mother or sister, uh, you cannot say, either you say it, it has grown, grown or not grown, according to medical science, it is not grown, it is changed. The body is changing. Uh, just like in a <coughs> film, spool, you'll find so many bodies. Uh, one hand is like this, one hand is like this, one hand is like this. And when they are taken together, it moves like this. This is the field. Field means there are different bodies in different positions. And when they are taken at once, it likes that it moves. The picture is not moving. Similarly, <coughs> We are changing as a different body, but it is taking place so quickly and so imperceptibly by Krishna's energy. The machine is so nice that we are thinking that it is growing. It is not growing. All different bodies, all different. Every moment, every second, that is the scientific. The blood corpus are changing and the body is different. <coughs> So this, this is the preliminary knowledge of advancing in spiritual knowledge. You do not know what is spirit and what is the spiritual knowledge. Uh, this is spirit. That spirit is there, or svindehe, in this body. There is the spirit soul, and the spirit soul is permanent. Uh, the spirit soul is permanent, and it is expressing in different way according to the change of body. Just like this child is now just like ordinary animal. Uh, but this body when he will change, he will express in a different way. He will express in a different way. Similarly, if you get the cat's body, you will express in a different way. If you get a dog's body, you will express in a different way. If you get the body of a tree that you cannot express, you will have to stand simply. You have to suffer. You cannot protest. Somebody is taking, cutting, uh, taking your food, cutting your branch, but you cannot protest. So this is going on perpetually, not perpetually, at least uh, for many, many millions of years. For many, many millions of years. But we are, because we are food, especially in this age of Kodija, we do not understand it. Uh, therefore, uh, it is said, satta saṅśuddhi, you require to be cured of your this disease, ignorance. That is called, just like when you become infected with some disease, you go to a physician and he gives you some injection or some medicine so that you may be cured. <clears throat> of the extra uh, fever or extra pain uh, due to your disease. Similarly, uh, <clears throat> those who are advanced in, in knowledge, their sattā existence is cured. Uh, uh, that we require. Or everyone requires to be cured of this uh, disease of ignorance. The ignorance. Disease of ignorance means I am this body. I am this body. I am not this body. Uh, so therefore it is saying, avayam sattva saṅśuddhi, sattva saṅśuddhi, 
and jnana, this satta saṅsuddhi, this purification of my existence is possible. It is simply jnana. I am, jnana means knowledge. I am, because I am in ignorance, therefore I am thinking I am this body. Uh, so it requires a little jnana, knowledge. Then we will understand that I am not this body, I am different from this body. Uh, uh, and because I am in ignorance, therefore I am thinking I am this body, I am this white body, I am this black body, I am this American body, I am this Indian body, I am this cat's body, I am dog's body, so many different consciousness. Uh, on account of this basic principle is this ignorance. Ignorance. So that we have to cure. That is the that is the special advantage of human life. The dogs, the cats, they cannot be cured. They cannot be given the knowledge. Because you are human being, you are together here to get this knowledge. The cats and dogs, they cannot come, they cannot take this knowledge. So we have got the advantage of getting this knowledge in this life. And again, if we go back to the cats and dogs' knowledge, then what is the benefit of getting this body? Uh, so this civilization, this dog civilization, is so spread all over the world that it is very, very difficult to cure it. Uh, we are making little attempt, but the Ignorance is so deep, uh, the disease is so acute, it is very, very difficult. Uh, but actually the disease is there. <clears throat> and avhayang, avhayang means fearlessness. So long we are in this uh, body, material body, there are four principles out of which one is bhayam, fearfulness. Uh, what will happen? What will happen? Uh, because uh, I am eternal, nahanati uh, sarima, but my body is to be annihilated. But because I am, this is the psychology, because I am eternal, I do not want my body be annihilated. But it will be, therefore I am always fearful, when it will be added, when it will be added. Is the time come? Is the time come? This is called bhayam. Bhayam diti avini satasyat, because I am identifying with this body, therefore there is fearfulness. And if by knowledge I can understand that uh, I am not this body, I am spirit soul, ahaṁ brahmāsmi, and if you are actually convinced, uh, then there is no fearfulness. Uh, in the Western country, there is only one philosopher, Socrates. Uh, he was condemned to death because he was speaking that I am soul, I am eternal. That was his fault. So the judges inquired, Mr. Socrates, now you are going to die. <coughs> so what kind of grave you want? So Socrates replied, first of all, capture me, then you put me into the grave. <laughs> that is fair. He would ask, hell, you are talking of my this body. Huh? So body is already material. You put it in the grave or in the hell, it doesn't matter. But I am eternal. You cannot capture me. <coughs> so this is knowledge. This is abhayam. He was going to be uh, hanged or killed. He is fearless. But what is this nonsense? He will kill my body. That's all. So it requires very firm knowledge. Nānate uh, hannavāne uh, sarīre. That is possible. Uh, that is possible by jñāna. That is possible by his father, demon father, Hiranyakashipu, was chastising him in so many ways. <coughs> and he was not afraid at all, fearless. 
Uh, because he has got me, then I am not this body. Uh, I am different from body. Nahanati, Hanavani, Sri I will not die. Uh, it is simply knowledge, firm knowledge. Uh, and as soon as you come to that position that I am not this body, then automatically you become avayam, no fear. Everyone is afraid of being killed. That is the most fearful position. Uh, but if you are convinced that I am not killed, I exist, that doesn't mean I shall be voluntarily prepared to be killed. No, that is not the idea. The idea is that <coughs> if we are jñāṇaṁ vairāgyaṁ, these two things required in human life. Jñāṇaṁ vairāgyaṁ. Jñāṇaṁ means I am not this body. This is jñāṇaṁ. And vairāgyaṁ means renunciation. See, if I am not this body, then what I have got to do with this material world? This material world is important because I am think identifying myself with this material body. That what is important. Where I shall sit, where shall I eat, where shall I sleep, uh, how shall I be protected, so many things. Uh, and there are many instances, just like Dhruva Maharaj, a five-year-old boy, he went to the jungle. Uh, he was sitting alone there. Avayam, uh, avayam, no fearfulness. The more you become uh, spiritually conscious, the uh, highest stage of spiritual consciousness is Krishna consciousness. Uh, Krishna consciousness means I am Krishna's. That's all. Krishna says, Mama Ivams, all these living entities, they are my part and parcel. Uh, so you have to understand this relationship with Krishna, that you are Krishna's. Uh, and Krishna, what is Krishna? Bhagavan. Bhagavan. What is Bhagavan? Uh, Aishadjasa, Samagrasa, Bijasa, Jasasasriya. Everything is definition there. Uh, in our Vedic knowledge there is no vague idea, rascal's idea, all clear. What is Bhagavan? Immediately you get the enunciation, definition. This is Bhagavan. Not that uh, so-called Bhagavan incarnation, this Baba, this yogi, these are all answers. Bhagavan is different. God is different. Uh, God means definition. You take the definition, Vedic definition, Oishajyasya, you know, all wealth. Who can claim that I am wealthy, I possess of all the wealth of the universe? Who can say? Only Krishna can say. Nobody can say. You may be millionaire, you may be rock, rocky filler or this. Tatar, Billas, you know, that, that is very insignificant position. But a, a Tata, a Rakifilar, they cannot say, no, I possess the whole wealth of the universe. That you cannot say. But Krishna can say. That what is Bhagavan. Aishadrasa, Samagrasa. Samagrasa means as much wealth they are. Uh, you may imagine. They, all the wealth becomes. Be, belongs to Krishna. Uh, when he was uh, present on this earth, he showed it. Uh, as much as we can comprehend, he showed. Uh, Sixteen thousand miles, Sixteen thousand palaces. Who can show it? Uh, we, if we hear of sixteen, we become surprised. Uh, we <laughs> Keep one wife, and that is very difficult for us. We have to think over hundred times whether we shall accept a wife to maintain. You see? But Krishna had sixteen thousand wives. But not like us having more than wife. 
Uh, one wife is crying, and another wife is in No. He also expanded himself in sixteen thousand form. Every wife is enjoying the husband. That is Bhagavan. Uh, that is Bhagavan. He tried to understand Bhagavan. Aishadyasya, uh, Samadgasya, Bijasya. And if you have got more than a wife, uh, a few years after you become important. Uh, but Krishna, in each wife, he begotten ten children. I will give you ten children. Sixteen thousand into ten. How many? One hundred sixty thousand. Then they had ten children again. This is Jadu family. This is Jadu. This is family, Krishna's family. So many. One person. And that is called Bhagavan. So something, Bhagavan. They simply cheap Bhagavan. And rascal present as cheap Bhagavan and rascal accept them as Bhagavan. This is not good. Try to find out the actual Bhagavan. That is Krishna. That is, he showed by practical example, he is accepted. By great great sages like Narad, Basdev, Devala, Asit, that is also stated when Arjun accepted him that you are the Supreme Lord. So you are the Supreme Lord. How? Because uh, people may say, I am your friend, therefore I am accepting. No. All the authorities say that you are the Supreme Lord. And I have understood by your personal explanation. And I accept. Sarvamitam Ritangamanne, Jadvada Siddhi. Whatever you have said, uh, I accept you. Because you are Bhagavan. This is Bhagavan. So if you accept Bhagavan's word with firm conviction, then your life is perfect. Immediately. Immediately you become perfect. There is no difficulty. Because I may be imperfect. But if I say, that I have understood this this is this glass, this spectacle uh, is spectacle. I've learned it from authority. That is a fact. Uh, I may be imperfect, but because I have learned from authorities that this is a spectacle, this is called spectacle, then this statement is correct. Similarly, <coughs> we may be imperfect. It doesn't matter. But because we are accepting the words and statement of Krishna, then our knowledge is imperfect. But it is not imperfect. It does not suit very All right. <coughs> so therefore Bhagavan was. We have to hear from Bhagavan, not from rascals. Then your knowledge is. If you hear from rascal, then you become rascal. Don't hear from any rascal. Hear from Bhagavad and take it and accept it, then gradually your existence will be purified. Just like uh, if somebody comes, uh, recently it so happened, there is a big Mahavadi Sannyasi in uh, India. His name is Akhannananda Swami, Parasiddha. Huh? I mean, did you know? No. Anyone? Anyway. He is a Mahavadi Sangha. <coughs> see? So, Ochutananda Swami went to sell some books in the camp. So his disciple uh, requested him, why didn't you ask some question from Swami? Huh? He said, oh, what I have to ask from him? You are so convinced that what this rascal can say to me, I know, I have heard from Krishna. This is knowledge. So if you stick to Krishna and hear from him, you haven't got to hear from any rascal, any rascal, then you will always try. Don't hear from any rascal. That is, therefore we are presenting Bhagavad-gītā as it is, as it is without any change. 
कृष्ण से मनमनाभवत भक्त मत जाजी मांग नमस्कृ जस्ट वी कैम माई डिवोटी ऑल इज थिंक ऑफ मी वी आर टीचिंग द सेम थिंग वी हैव नो डिफिकल्टी वाट वी आर रिक्वेस्टिंग यू यू थिंक ऑफ कृष्ण चैन ठड़ी कृष्ण वेर इज द डिफिकल्ट वी डोंट से यू थिंक ऑफ दैट दिस ऑफ दैट दिस दिस डेमी गॉड दैट डेमी गॉड नो वी डोंट से वेर इज द यूज ऑफ other day we got we, we, we show all respect to everyone even to the ant but that does that mean that any day we got any dam and it ask us to be worship as god no that is not possible uh, we can show respect even to the insignificant ant tina the pishu ni che no taroro pishu that may be another but we cannot accept anyone as god that is not possible That is knowledge. That is knowledge. Uh, be convinced firmly, Krishna is the Bhagavan. Bhagavan means Krishna. Never die. Kamastastha hitagyana jajanti anna devota. Anna devota accept as God. They are accepted by the rascals. Hitagyana. Those who have lost their knowledge. They have lost their hitagyana. Hitagyana means nasta buddha. Those have lost their knowledge. So don't be lost of your knowledge. Stick to Krishna and accept His words as it is. And then you will be one day fearless. Avayam sattva sangsiddhi. Your existence and will be purified. Spiritual existence. Uh, purified existence means spiritual existence. We are spiritual. You are not this material. Yes, I am not this sat. You are not this sat. You are within this sat. Similarly, asmin de dehi asmin jathadi. Dehi asmin jathadi. He. We are within this sat. This is the first knowledge that I am not this body. Why I shall be puffed up with this body? Uh, this is superfluous. I am spirit soul. I am part and parcel of Krishna. Therefore, my only business is with Krishna. Just like your hand, part and parcel of your body, its only business is to with this body. Huh? I am taking care of this body. Huh? I am taking care of this hand, this leg, this head, because there is intimate relationship with this body and with this head. I am not suppose if you are in danger, your head is in danger. I am not going to protect, but when my head is in danger, I uh, prepare to give life. Similarly, we are part and parcel of Krishna, <coughs> and Krishna is all powerful. He says, "I will give you protection," and I just like I am giving protection to my hands and legs. So what about Krishna? Krishna also prepared, but if you deny his protection, that is a different thing. But if you are prepared to take his protection, ahamta sarva pabu, then you should immediately attain avayam no more fear. Rakhe Krishna mare ke, mare Krishna rakhe ke. If Krishna wants to kill you, who can save you? Nobody can save you. And if Krishna wants to protect you, who can kill you? This is this is philosophy. Avayam. So if you want to be fearless, if you want to uh, sanctify your. The following is a discourse on the Bhagavad Gita as it is, 16th chapter, text number one through seven, given by His Divine Grace A. C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded on June 26th, 1976, at the New Brindavan Farm Community. Performance of sacrifice. Study of the Vedas, austerity and simplicity, non-violence, truthfulness, freedom from anger, renunciation, tranquility, aversion to fault finding, compassion and freedom from covetousness, gentleness, modesty and steady determination, vigor, forgiveness, fortitude, 
cleanliness, freedom from envy, and the passion for honor. These transcendental qualities, O son of Bharata, belong to godly men endowed with divine nature. In the beginning of the 15th chapter, the banyan tree of this material world was explained. The extra roots coming out of it were compared to the activities of the living entities, some auspicious, some inauspicious. In the ninth chapter also, the devas, or godly, and the asuras, the ungodly, or demons, were explained. Now, according to Vedic rites, activities in the mode of goodness are considered auspicious for progress on the path of liberation, and such activities are known as deva prakriti, transcendental by nature. Those who are situated in the transcendental nature but make if, progress. Except the modern civilization is that they have no idea about liberation. Neither they have any idea about transmigration of this world. From the very root they are defect. They are thinking just like animals. Animal uh, uh, dog is thinking that uh, this dog. Uh, I born dog and then die, just finish everything. He cannot think that I can become also man. He cannot think. So the modern civilization, they cannot think even that there is next life. And we can go. We have got the tendency to go to the hard planetary system, moon, artificially, they try. But they do not know. They, they, they can go to any planet. Sarvaga. Jansi Deva, Brita Deva, Pitri, Jansi They do not know this. Although they have got the tendency to go, but they do not know how to go positively. What are the positions of the different planets or Vaikuntha Lok or liberation or next life transfer? Nothing. Simply like dog. Now consider this point whether I am speaking right or wrong. I am no, I am speaking the right thing, but you, if you deny, then you talk amongst you. Because anything to liberation means that you can do anything you like, that you can be huh? free from any moral or ethic. Or that is the raskalda. That is raskalda. Just like in prison house, if a prisoner thinks that he can do whatever he likes. That is Raskin. That is going on. The modern civilization is Raskin. He is seeing practically that he is under the control of material nature. And still he thinks that he can do whatever he likes. This is Raskin. The Christian conception of salvation was more one of being saved from hell rather than an attraction for some that transcendental reality. That is the same reality. conception, but the mass of people, they, they do not know what is hell because they are living in the hell already. That was the story. When hell was disguised, he was undisturbed. But when he was informed that there is no newspaper in hell, then he becomes always. How one can live there? He don't live. So so far hellish condition is there now Pradhuna Hai is Pradhuna Maharaj. He was just crying about that factory. So they are watching the factory, what do they care for hell? If we go to hell, we we'll get some good salary, that's why. Money required, then I said, drink nicely. Then 
the standard is there. Now this qualification of Ayam Sattva Sanskriti, it does not strike them at all. These qualities are high quality. Is it not? This is the What is the translation? Fearlessness. Purification of one's existence. Who is fearless? Everyone is fearful. And fearlessness is good quality. Who understands it? This is animal life. To eat, sleep, sex, and become fearful. That is animal life. And one has to become fearless. So, who cares for it? They are thinking to become fearless means to keep gun. That is also one way. Hmm. Then fearlessness and purification of one's existence. Hmm. And that they do not know. When they fall sick, then they want to purify, go to the physician. But his whole life is impure, he doesn't know. Because it is impure, therefore. We are subjected to birth, death, old age and disease, that they do not know. But if you scrutinize English, examine all these different items of advancement of life, the modern man has no idea. That is being explained in this chapter. Therefore there is no such education, neither people are interested. Now, I had art classes in the colleges, universities, no student is joined. They are simply joining technological classes. who are situated in the transcendental nature make progress on the path of liberation. For those who are acting the modes of passion and ignorance, on the other hand, there is no possibility of liberation. Either they will have to remain now, in this... Is there what we care for liberation? Is it that possible? We have to sacrifice so many things. We don't want to do that is nonsense. You keep your divorce. We don't want it. It is good. As you said, devotion means whatever I like, I do. But that is actually he cannot do that. But he's thinking that is devotion. Can he do that? Whatever he likes. But he still is. Therefore, ask him. Dog's life. The dog is jumping, barking here, well, but I am free now. But uh, he forgets that as soon as the master will call and chain him, he'll do it. But he's thinking that I am living. What is it given? He does not know what is given.
Either they will have to remain in this material world as human beings, or they will descend among the species of the animals, or even lower life forms. I will preach, that is the problem. This is their problem. We were finding, Srila Prabhupada, hmm. that they were not, they could not defeat Varnashram Dharma. Hmm? They had no society like Varnashrama. In the colleges, they could not understand this body, but we showed them how the society could be arranged harmoniously, and they had no alternative. Their ideas on how to structure society for everyone's happiness, they have no good ideas. So that preaching platform they could understand, Varnashram. Like they will understand. I am just pointing out the difficulties mm. of your preaching. You will have to face all these difficulties. They are like cats and dogs, man. not even human beings. Therefore, the business is little hard job. You have to deal with cats and dogs. But still there is hope because they have got this human form of life. There is hope. It is not hopeless. Don't be disappointed, but this is the job. You have to meet with cats and dogs. That is my point. When you go to preach, you must know that I have come to preach among cats and dogs, and I have to deal with them carefully, otherwise you can bark. <laughs> That's why I wrote that poetry, in disappointment, before entering your country. Now what they will understand, this philosophy? In this sixteenth chapter, the Lord explains both the transcendental nature and its attendant qualities, as well as the demoniac nature and its qualities. He also explains the advantages and disadvantages of these qualities. The word avidatasya, in reference to one born of transcendental qualities or godly tendencies, is very significant. To beget a child in a godly atmosphere is known in the Vedic scriptures as Garbhadana Samskara. If the parents want a child in godly qualities, they should follow the ten principles of the human being. In Bhagavad Gita, we have studied also before that sex life for begetting a good child is Krishna Himself. Sex life is not condemned provided the process is used in Krishna consciousness. Those who are in Krishna consciousness at least should not beget children like cats and dogs but should beget them so they may become Krishna conscious after birth. That should be the advantage of children born of a mother or father absorbed in Krishna consciousness. The social institution known as Varnashram Dharma, the institution dividing society into four divisions or castes, is not meant to divide human society according to birth. Such divisions are in terms of educational qualifications. They are to keep the society in a state of peace and prosperity. The qualities mentioned herein are explained as transcendental qualities meant for making a person progress in spiritual understanding so he can get liberated from the material so, world. So what is that in To train people to acquire this transcendental world. There is no such thing. We are attempting to qualify the man in transcendental form. This is the only institution. Otherwise, where it is? <coughs> I don't think throughout the whole world there is any institution <coughs> to train the students in transcendental quality. 
वो कैश पा ट्रांसेंडेंटल क्वालिटी In the Varnashram institution, the sannyasi or the person in the renounced order of life is considered to be the head or the spiritual master of all the social statuses and orders. A Brahmin is considered to be the spiritual master of the three other sections of society, namely the Kshatriya, the Vaishya, and the Sudra. But a sannyasi who is on the top of the institution is considered to be the spiritual master of the Brahmins also. For a sannyasi. The first qualification should be fearlessness. Because a sannyasi has to be alone, without any support or guarantee of support, he has simply to depend on the mercy of the supreme personality of Godhead. If he thinks, after leaving my connections, who will protect me? He should not accept the renounced order of life. One must be fully convinced that Krishna, or the supreme personality of Godhead, in his localized aspect as Param Atma, is always within. That he is seeing everything, and that he always knows what one intends to do. One must have this firm conviction that Krishna, as Paramatma, will take care of a soul surrendered unto Him. I shall never be alone. One should think. <clears throat> I shall never be alone. One should think. Even if I live in the darkest regions of a forest, I shall be accompanied by Krishna, and He will give me all protection. That conviction is called. Abayam, without fear. This state of mind is necessary for a person in the renounced order of life. Then he has to purify his existence. There are so many rules and regulations to be followed in the renounced order of life. Most important of all, a sannyasi is strictly forbidden to have any intimate relationship with a woman. He is even forbidden to talk with a woman in a secluded place. Lord Chaitanya was an ideal sannyasi, and when he was at Puri. His feminine devotees could not even come near to offer their respects. They were advised to bow down from a distant place. This is not a sign of hatred for women as a class, but it is a stricture imposed on the sannyasi not to have close connections with women. One has to follow the rules and regulations of a particular status of life in order to purify his existence. For a sannyasi, intimate relations with a woman. And possessions of wealth for sense gratification are strictly forbidden. The ideal sannyasi was Lord Chaitanya himself, and we can learn from his life that he was very strict in regards to women. Although he is considered to be the most liberal incarnation of Godhead, accepting the most fallen conditioned souls, he strictly followed the rules and regulations of the sannyas order of the life in connection with association with women. The next item is. Jnana Yoga, Vyavastati, being engaged in the cultivation of knowledge. Sannyasi life is meant for distributing knowledge to the householders and others who have forgotten their real life of spiritual advancement. A sannyasi is supposed to beg from door to door for his livelihood, but that does not mean that he is a beggar. Humility is also one of the qualifications of a transcendentally situated person, and out of sheer humility, the sannyasi goes from door to door. Not exactly for the purpose of begging, but to see the householders and awaken them to Krishna consciousness. This is the duty of a sannyasi. If he is actually advanced and so ordered by his spiritual master, he should preach Krishna consciousness with logic As and understanding. As a gentleman, if you go to somebody's house, you require his permission. But in India, still a sannyasi doesn't require any permission. He can enter in any householder's house. Mother gave me some food. This is introduction. Not that he has gone there for food, but easy introduction. And generally, the householder will receive a sannyasi. Yes, some will come here, sit down. They will offer obeisance, and then they begin talk. This is the meaning. Not that he is hankering after food. This is only introduction. Is not a beggar. But people take advantage of this dress because they think 
but without any wife. I can beg and live. No problem. That is going on in India. So many rascals they are taking the sannyasi dress and living at the cost of others. Therefore people have become disgusted. Mm-hmm. They have no knowledge to preach. Yes, well. If he is actually advanced and so ordered by his spiritual master, he should preach Krishna consciousness with logic and understanding. And if he is not so advanced, he should not accept the renounced order of life. But even if he has accepted the renounced order of life without sufficient knowledge, he should engage himself fully in hearing from a bona fide spiritual master to cultivate knowledge. A sannyasi or one in the renounced order of life must be situated in fearlessness, sattva samshuddhi, purity, and jnana yoga, knowledge. The next item is charity. Charity is meant for the householders. The householders should earn a livelihood by honorable means and spend 50% of their income to propagate Krishna consciousness all over the world. Thus a householder should give in charity to such institutional societies that are engaged in that way. Charity should be given to the right receiver. There are different kinds of charities, as will be explained later. Charity in the modes of goodness, passion and ignorance. Charity in the mode of goodness is recommended by the scriptures, but charity in the modes of passion and ignorance is not recommended because it is simply a waste of money. <clears throat> charity should be given only to propagate Krishna consciousness all over the world. That is charity in the mode of goodness. Then as far as Dhamma, self-control is concerned, it is not only meant for other orders of religious society, but it is specially meant for the householder. Although he has a wife, a householder should not use his senses for sex life unnecessarily. There are restrictions for the householders, even in sex life, which should only be engaged for the propagation of children. If he does not require children, he should not enjoy sex life with his wife. Modern society enjoys sex life with contraceptive methods or more abominable methods to avoid the responsibility of children. This is not in the transcendental quality, but it is demoniac. If anyone, even if he is a householder, wants to make progress in spiritual life, he must control his sex life and should not beget a child without the purpose of serving Krishna. If he is able to beget children who will be in Krishna consciousness, one can produce hundreds of children. But without this capacity, one should not indulge only for sense pleasure. Sacrifice is another item to be performed by the householders because sacrifices require a large amount of money. Other orders of life, namely the brahmachari, the vanaprastha, and the sannyas, have no money. They live by begging. So performance of different types of sacrifices meant for the householder. They should perform agnihotra sacrifices as enjoined in Vedic literatures. But such sacrifices at the present moment are very expensive, and it is not possible for any householder to perform them. The best sacrifice recommended in this age is called sankirtan and jaga, the chanting of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. This is the best and the most inexpensive sacrifice. Everyone can adopt it and derive benefit. So these three items, namely charity, sense control, and performance of sacrifice, are meant for the householder. Then, Svadhyaya, Vedic study, and Tapa, austerity, and Arjavam, gentleness or simplicity, are meant for the brahmachari, or student life. Brahmacharis should have no connection with women. They should live a life of celibacy and engage the mind in the study of Vedic literature for the cultivation of spiritual knowledge. This is called svadhyaya. Tapas, or austerity, is meant for the retired life. One should not remain a householder throughout his whole life. He must always remember that there are four divisions of life. Brahmachari, Grihastha, Vanaprastha, and Sanyas. So after Grihastha, householder life, one should retire. If one lives for a hundred years, <clears throat> one should spend 25 years in student life, 25 years in householder life, 25 in retired life, and 25 in the renounced order of life. These are the regulations of the Vedic religious discipline. A man retired from household life must practice austerities of the body, mind, and tongue. That is tapasya. 
The entire Varnashram Dharma Society is meant for tapasya. Without tapasya or austerity, no human being can get liberation. The theory that there is no need of austerity in life, that one can go on speculating and everything will be nice, is neither recommended in the Vedic literature nor in the Bhagavad Gita. Such theories are manufactured by show bottle spiritualists who are trying to gather more followers. If there are restrictions, rules and regulations, people will not become attracted. Therefore, those who want followers in the name of religion, just to have a show only, don't restrict the lives of their students nor their own lives. But that method is not approved by the Vedas. As far as simplicity is concerned, not only should a particular order of life follow this principle, but every member, be he in the Brahmacharya Ashram, Grihastha Ashram, or Vanaprast Ashram, one must live very simply. Ahimsa means not arresting the progressive life of any living entity. One should not think that since the spirit spark is never killed, even after killing of the body, that there is no harm in killing animals for sense gratification. People are now addicted to eating animals in spite of having an ample supply of grains, fruits, and milk. There is no necessity for animal killing. This injunction is for everyone. When there is no other alternative, one may kill an animal, but it should be offered in sacrifice. At any rate, when there is ample food supply for humanity, persons who are desiring to make advancement in spiritual realization should not commit violence to animals. Real Ahimsa means not checking anyone's progressive life. The animals are also making progress in their evolutionary life by transmigrating from one category of animal life to another. If a particular animal is killed, then his progress is checked. If an animal is staying in a particular body for so many days or so many years and is untimely killed, then he has to come back again in that form of life to complete the remaining days in order to be promoted to another species of life. Satyam. This word means that one should not distort the truth for some personal interest. In Vedic literature, there are some difficult passages, but the meaning or the purpose should be learned from a bona fide spiritual master. That is the process for understanding the Vedas. Shruti means that one should hear from the authority. One should not construe some interpretation for his personal interest. There are so many commentaries on Bhagavad Gita that misinterpret the original text. The real import of the word should be presented, and that should be learned from a bona fide spiritual master. Text 4. Tambodapo bimanascha koda parusha mevacha agyanam cha bijatasya parta sampada masurim. Arrogance, pride, anger, conceit, harshness, and ignorance. These qualities belong to those of demoniac nature, Osana Prita. In this verse, the royal road to hell is described. The demoniac want to make a show of religion and advancement in spiritual science, although they do not follow the principles. They are always arrogant or proud in possessing some type of education or so much wealth. They desire to be worshipped by others, and they demand respectability, although they do not command respect. Over trifles, they become very angry and speak harshly, not gently. They do not know what should be done and what should not be done. They do everything whimsically according to their own desire and they do not recognize any authority. These demoniac qualities are taken on by them from the very beginning of their bodies in the wombs of their mothers, and as they grow, they manifest all these inauspicious qualities. Oh, you are answering the, the thing, liberty means automatic life, or oh, they are demand. <clears throat> Now discuss this. There's one, you quoted Chanaka Pandit, and he describes a scholar. A scholar is a man who can see all women as his mother and all living entities, treats them equally, and others' property as trash. So in today's civilization, they're mistaking a scholar for a rogue, and a rogue for a scholar. And here, Krishna is explaining. A godly man, and the qualities of a scholar, a gentleman. Whereas in today's civilization is upside down, backwards. Yeah. Never preaching is required.
they feel the godly qualities are a sign of weakness and the demoniac qualities is a good sign of heroism. Weakness. That is heroism. Yes, heroism. Mm. So this uh, purport Srila Prabhupada perfectly describes our student life. Uh, as students, we were doing everything whimsically. Uh, or we would accept that bad Lord Maharaj recommend from the beginning of student life, go marong asarit prago, dharmaan bhago, they should be trained now in Krishna concept. That's what Lord Maharaj recommend. Now from the very beginning of student life, that because there is no education, he is tender as What can you say? Uh, so things, so many things have to be reformed by pushing on Krishna consciousness. These are Krishna consciousness movement. Whatever is described in the Bhagavad Gita. That is within the jurisdiction of Krishna consciousness. So we have to do our water. Daivi sampad vimokshaya nibandhaya srimata masucha sampadam daivim abhijato sipandava. The transcendental qualities are conducive to liberation, whereas the demonic qualities make for bondage. Do not worry, O son of Pandu, for you are born with the divine qualities. Lord Krishna encouraged Arjuna by telling him that he was not born with demoniac qualities. His involvement in the fight was not demoniac because he was considering the pros and cons. He was considering whether respectable persons such as Bhishma and Drona should be killed or not. So he was not acting under the influence of anger, false prestige or harshness. Therefore he was not of the quality of the demons. For a country, a military man shooting arrows at the enemy is considered transcendental and refraining from such a duty is demoniac. Therefore, there was no cause for Arjuna to lament. Anyone who performs the regulated principles of the different orders of life <coughs> is transcendentally situated. Discuss on this point. They may say that we have arbitrarily given some... Uh, specific duties to different people. Mm -hmm. They may say that we have arbitrarily given that the Kshatriya is supposed to kill like this. That actually everyone should be a good man. It is given by Krishna. It is not arbitrary. By the supreme order. How they can say it is arbitrary. Then what is the use of referring to Bhagavad Gita? Things may not be arbitrary, whimsical. Therefore, we have to take reference from Bhagavad Gita. Rabu. When a judge gives his judgment, uh, he does not give it arbitrarily. There is Rabu. So there is no question of arbitrary. To reference is there. How you can say it is arbitrary? But it's not fair. Shastra vidhi. Rather, if you don't care for Shastra vidhi, then you will never be successful. The Shastra vidhi mutsijya. In this chapter, you will find. Yashashta vidi mushtrija vartate kama karata nasasidim avapnoti nasukam na param gatim. But he who discards scriptural injunctions and acts according to his own whims attains neither perfection nor happiness nor the supreme destination. You do not give anything out of it. Hmm. Actually, this is a fact because we see by following their authorities, they're becoming more and more unhappy, and by following our authorities, 
we are becoming more and more happy. So the result is there even in this life we can see. Yeah. What to speak beyond this life? They can say not everyone is made happy by a war. Yeah. They can say that, for example, the uh, wives of Duryodhana and all of these people who were killed, they were not made happy. No, Dharmakshet and Kurukshet. Otherwise they could not fight. They are not Vietnam soldiers. When they are attacked, they are going away. They are not like that. They determine that either, either lay down life or gain victory. That is it. They are not afraid of fight. Do you think they are afraid of fight? No, no. That is their culture. Buddha is Chappalaya, no? That is real culture training. I mean to say that they may consider that this is a selfish type of happiness, though. Hmm. Not taking they into may consideration. Think they are asking, they can't think anything. <laughs> we haven't got to reply all of them. Because they are rascals. They can talk all nonsense. We haven't got to take care of them. Just like a child, he's he talking so many foolishly. Sometimes we reply, yes, yes, we want. Well, who don't take seriously any, anything spoken by a child. So these rascals may go on talking so many things that we haven't got to take care of all of it. We have to do our own business. <coughs> Let the dog back on. The caravan will pass. So not that we have to take care of the barking of the dogs always. Let them bark. Drau Bhuta Sarga Lokeshmin Daiva Asura Evacha Daiva Vishtarasha Prokta Asuram Partha Me Shunu O Sanaprita, in this world there are two kinds of created beings. One is called the divine and the other demonic. I've already explained to you at length the divine qualities. Now hear from me of the demoniac. Pravritim cha nivritim cha janana vidura sura nasaucham na picha charo nasacham te shuvidyate Those who are demoniac do not know what is to be done and what is not to be done. Neither cleanliness nor proper behavior, nor truth is found in them. Etam drishtim bhavashtabhya nastatmano lapudhaya prabhavanti ugrakamana shayaya jagatohita This is the right description of modern age. Yes. It's perfect. Exact. Yes. Hmm. What is that? It angles thing vast of your they've lost their soul. Uh. There is no information about this soul. Nastatmana. God and soul is lost. There is no God, there is no cause of this creation, there was a chant like that. That is, Etam Dishtim Avastabhya. Really? Etam Dishtim Avastabhya Nishtat Mano Alpa Buddhaya Prabhavanti. They have lost that cell. Nishtat Mano Alpa Buddha. No intelligence. No intelligence. There is no catch on that. If these four principles are available, that's when it's life is passed, success, eating, sleeping, maintaining. Alpha Buddha. Anyone? Then? Prabhanti Ugra Karmana. Ugra Karmana, the factory. This is Ugra Karmana. Pradhuna was describing Ugra Karma. 
Elif Little karma yes wheat is growing little tilling that sufficient what is you of opening big big factory oh good what it has held we are talking on behalf of them what it has held so hmm? perfect keeping them in our sense men or men have kept in that factory simply for livelihood. Little work will provide his life. His nature has given so much facility. He can grow <coughs> little food anywhere. The cows are there on the pasturing ground. Take milk and live peacefully. Why you often practice? What is use? Keeping them in hellish the condition of life. So this is the description. Now discuss this part. You say, Srila Prabhupada, they engage in unbeneficial, horrible works meant to destroy the world, and that this refers to the atomic weapons. This is so, so, so true. Yes. God speaking, Krishna speaking. I was studying this nuclear energy in college, thinking that it would save the world, that by the energy they could make bigger tomatoes, bigger corn, <laughs> and Bigger death. <laughs> Conclusion is bigger death. Yes. Everything big. One man was dying. Now many hundreds of thousands will die. Bigger death. He did not consider it. Bigger death. It was very frustrating, though, because for every thing they were trying to do good, they found so many more things bad were coming. That is, karma jagat means that if you have to raise this house, then you have to cut the wood somewhere. Huh. You have to destroy somewhere, and then you can make house. You have to adjust things like that. You cannot create. This house is constructed, created by destroying someone else. Is it not? So what is your creation? Creation is God's creation. He has created everything. And if you want to create, you have to discuss that. That is karma. Mm -hmm. Sometimes these people are called Dushkritina. And you've mentioned that the Dushkritina actually he has some intelligence. Yeah. Misused. Intelligence. After destroying the wood, you use your intelligence to construct this house. You have intelligence. There is no doubt. Human being must have intelligence, but that intelligence is given to him for getting out of the clutches of birthday holding. He is not utilizing that intelligence for that purpose. That was the scripture. Intelligence he has got. We don't say the modern world they are unintelligent, fools. No, no, they have got intelligence. But the intelligence is being utilized for duskarga, which he should not have done. Duskarga, karja and duskarga. Mark and bad work. His intelligence was given 
so that he could get relief from these clutches of birth, death, old age, and but that he is not utilizing. He is opening factory and creating another bad atmosphere. That was this thing. To open a factory requires intelligence. Some machine is working, that's all right. But how this intelligence being used to keep man in hellish condition? That's the question. They're also very narrow-minded, just like they, uh, they may open a factory, but they're not thinking the effects of the factory. That they so because therefore this is the murha, next word. Because they are murha, therefore this is the murha. At the same time, it said that Krishna gives the intelligence. Matasmitir jnana. And you want it to do, Krishna gives intelligence. You want to manufacture a very complicated machine. It's not giving to all I do like this. Manufacture. You will not hear Krishna, Sarudharvan Paritajya. That is Krishna's intelligence. That he would ask and give up this all this. But we will not do it. You want to do it, but Krishna is so can all I do it. See the effect. Without Krishna's help, we cannot do anything. Papa, you have called the politicians representatives of Rani Kashipu. Mm-hmm. They are trying to become immortal, just like devotees, but but without. Yeah, it is. There are two kinds of men already described. They was they was these two kinds of activities will go on. This is material world. We cannot find out ten percent perfect man. That is not perfect. A class of men imperfect will be there. But it is being described who is imperfect and who is perfect. That you have to select. You cannot clear this material world of imperfect person. That is not possible. They are real demand. But you must know he is perfect and he is imperfect. And make your choice. Either you want to remain imperfect or want to make progress to become perfect. That is up to you. It seems almost like a, a contradiction in one sense that Prabhavanti, that they flourish, and at the same Prabhavanti time... Prabhavanti materially. Yeah. Materially, just like when you go to a modern city, and so how developed. Prabhavanti. But what kind of Prabhavanti? That is next word. Jagata Hitaya, to destroy this world. <coughs> so they are Prabhavanti in the Opposite direction. <coughs> but it's not Prabhavanti actually. Prabhavanti in the material sense. But what is the purpose? What is the end? Jagata Hitaya. There are two kinds of progress. To help, to have. Hmm. Fifty years ago they were thinking it was progress to build big skyscrapers. Now it's so hellish in the cities everybody's moving out. Yes. yes. Actually, when there are so many skyscraper building, it is hell. The natural air is obstructed. No sunlight. In Bombay, you see. If you are on the top floor, you have got little facility. In the lower floor, you will hell. If there are several skyscraper buildings, and the first, first floor, second floor, it is simply hell. No air. Simply you have to run on this electric fan. You cannot see the sky. Therefore it is meant skyscraper. What is crap 
offered him any. He scrapes the touches. Huh? Touching the touches. So you have touched the sky in such a way I cannot see it. <laughs> <laughs> this is the reason. You demand, you have captured the sky, so I have no opportunity to see you. All is electric light. Now we see the sky, the sun, how nice it is. This is light. Green, down and up, clear sky, sun. This is light. We get rejuvenation in this atmosphere. What is this nonsense? All sky is covered building. No air, no light. Jagatavikaya. The mind becomes crippled, the health becomes deteriorated. Children cannot see even the sky. Everything is spoiled. Every day in the city they make a report, pollution hmm. report, and they say you should go outside or not go outside. Some days you are not, it is not good for your health to leave your home. They are also selling fresh air from. Fresh air. They are selling fresh air. <laughs> fresh water also. Yeah. Sure. In Tokyo they have special machines you can get air, fresh. clean water. By cleaning the urine? No. <laughs> now they are doing that. Mm -hmm. Fresh water by cleaning urine. No. Fat derived from stool. Yes, German people did it. Fat extracted from stool. Scientifically. <laughs> you can use it with butter very nice. <laughs> Bread. <laughs> Some of the materialists may not may may argue that these activities are not all that unbeneficial are not all that unbeneficial. For example, they they've made a tractor and in America they can produce so many grains, so much so that practically they could feed the world. Why do they not? So their, mentality so huh? their mentality is very abominable. Their mentality is very abominable. Do that. There are so many overpopulations. And you can do it in America. So much land lying vacant here. Better to put the people in the factories in the fields. If they're going to work, let them work growing the grain and milking the cow. Yes. Then they will live very happily. That will not be. Jalatahikaya. Ready? Shayaya Jagat Hitaya. Shayaya. Shayaya means for ruinous. Bringing ruin to ruinous. To save them from ruinous. Actually, I've seen in New York some quarters so nasty. In London also, so nasty. Disaster. So many stores found lying where I am. I was when I had no business, I was loitering to see the city. Alice country. They said it is this. It was risky, but I did not know that it was risky. One uh, electrician, he was my friend. So, of course, I was buying those quarters. It is not for you, don't. I do not care. <laughs> <laughs> but I have got will take from me. <laughs> so I was loitering in New York City. So many nasty quarters. London also. So many houses, they can. <coughs> there is more chance of being killed in New York City than in the jungle. Yes, they warned me not to go to the central park in the evening. Mm. They say at night nobody goes there. Except the thieves. Huh? Except the thieves and killers. Yes, such an important city. 
and such important part. Is there any stage at which these atheistic people have done anything good by accident? Hmm? Is there any step? Therefore, they support this accident here. <laughs> oh. Nowadays, they, they have got the accident. Because ordinarily there is no good. There is no possibility. But by accident, if some good comes, <laughs> that's all. Otherwise, Jagata Ahitaya. It is only for bad. But accidentally, when good comes, Accidentally, Krishna consciousness movement came. And then it was going on. Nobody called Krishna consciousness, the scientists, the philosophers, the politicians. But accidentally came. That's the name of God desire. We cannot explain God, therefore we take it as accident. It's very interesting. Hmm. Very in a Veda community, everything is very ordered and goodness prevails. Therefore, God consciousness seems very natural. No. Following such conclusions, the demoniac were lost to themselves and have no intelligence engage in unbeneficial, horrible works meant to destroy the world. The demoniac are engaged in activities that will lead the world to destruction. The Lord states here that they are less intelligent. The materialists who have no concept of God think that they are advancing. But according to Bhagavad Gita, they are unintelligent and devoid of all sense. They try to enjoy this material world to the utmost limit and therefore always engage in inventing something for sense gratification. Such materialistic inventions are considered to be the advancement of human civilization. But the result is that people grow more and more violent and more and more cruel, cruel to animals and cruel to other human beings. They have no idea how to behave toward one another. Animal killing is very prominent amongst demoniac people. Such people are considered the enemies of the world because ultimately they will invent or create something which will bring destruction to all. Indirectly, this verse anticipates the invention of nuclear weapons, of which the whole world is today very proud. At any moment, war may take place, and these atomic weapons... The following is a class on the Bhagavad Gita as it is. 16th chapter, text number 4, given by His Divine Grace. A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Recorded on the 30th of January, 1975 in Tokyo, Japan You have discussed last night some of the divine characteristics and Avayam Sattva Sabhsuddhi, like that, sixteen, 
divine characteristics and here the demonic characteristics. We can understand a thing by analysis of characteristics. In the chemical laboratory, things are tested by characteristics. Just like this chemical color is like this, shape is like this, then taste is like this, chemical reaction is like this. They are stated for each and every chemical, and we can understand the purity by the characteristic. The characteristic is also called dharma. That's like a snake. The snake characteristic is that unnecessarily, without any offense, it bites, and the animal which is bitten, it dies. Uh, this is the characteristic. Without any fault, uh, the snake is going and the other animal is going, go, but the characteristic of snake is unnecessarily bites. Uh, this is the characteristic. Chanakya Pandi says, Sarpakrura khala krura, sarpath kuratara khala, that two kinds of krura, Envious animals are there. One is the snake, and the other is envious man. So Chanakapani says that both of them envious, but the envious man is more dangerous than the envious snake. Why? Because the snake can be brought into submission by herbs and mantra. There are snake charmer, they chant mantras and they apply some herb and the snake come under subjugation. But Kalakena Nivadati. But the snake like man, he cannot be subdued at any cost. So there are characteristics. By the characteristics we can understand who is a godly man and who is a demonic man. So they are stated. And the next verse is there. Daivi Sampad Vimakhaya. If one has this divine characteristic, then he is eligible for going to the spiritual world. Vimakhaya. Daivi Sampad Vimakhaya. Nibandhaya Asuri Mata. But this demonic characteristic, tamha dharpa vimanascha parusam agyanam sampadāsuri, if we develop this kind of characteristic, then it is our material bondage. So we are the cause of material bondage and freedom from material world. We are ourselves are the cause. There is no other cause. Simply we have to develop either this demonic characteristic or the divine characteristic. So human life is meant for developing divine characteristic, not this demonic characteristic. Demonic characteristic is already there. Just like Dhamma. A dog has also Pride. I am this dog. I am hostile. I am this. Oh, that. The Dhamma is there. Even in the dog. Even in the lower animal. Even in the cat. Eh? But divine characteristic. Oh, I am so low. Tinadu eh? Bhishunita. I am lower than the grass. I am lower than the God. This is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. What is this Dhamma? Why I should be pride? What is this pride? So that is ignorance, due to ignorance. When one man is unnecessarily proud, that means it is due to ignorance. And Chaitanya Chaitanya Amitabha, he describes himself 
that I am lower than the worms in the stew. Purusher, purusher, eh, purusher kit haite muise logista. Jagai magai haite muise papis. Adam vittam, in the ninth chapter. Just the opposite. Why I shall be proud? What I have got? I am humble servant of Krishna. Let me discharge my duties. But if one is proud after becoming a pure servant of Krishna, that is very good. That dambha, that pride is very glorious. I am a servant of Krishna. That is very nice. One has got the tendency to become proud. So if one is proud to become a cat and dog or a tiger or a so-called big man of this material world, that is for his bondage. Asuri, devi sampad vimakkhaya. That is, devi, if you become proud in devi sampad, if you become proud by becoming the most confidential servant of Krishna, the same pride is for your liberation. And if you become proud that I am minister or I am big dog, that is for nibandhaya, your bondage, you will continue material life. By your spiritual pride, of course we must be proud after being situated in the spiritual platform. Otherwise that is also ignorance. So two things are there, daivi sampad and asuri sampad. Asuri sampad means more and more entanglement and bondage within this material world. And daivi sampad means your freedom from material world. So first of all we must decide what we want. Whatever you want, you will have. Krishna is very kind. If you want to remain bound up by the laws of material nature within this material world, karanam guna sangha sa, as you contaminate the different material modes of nature, we get different situation of life, different forms of body, different circumstances. Krishna has arranged everything. Very accurate. His arrangement is very perfect. Parasya Shakti Vividhaiva Sriyati. When he does something, he desires only. By his desire, the energies are there. Immediately the energy works. Just like you have got some energy, if you desire, immediately it begins to work. We have got experience. Similarly, we have got limited number of energies. Uh, Krishna has got unlimited number of energies. So if we desire to become something unlimitedly, Krishna can supply you your necessities unlimitedly. Jeetathamaṁ prapadyante. That freedom is there. If you want to remain as a demon, uh, then Krishna will supply you all the ingredients, how you can flourish as a demon. Just like there was Hiranyakasipu and there was Prahlad. Prahlad was being supplied a spiritual advancement of life, necessities. And Hiranyakasipu was being supplied for demonic status of life. So it is Krishna's pleasure that whatever you want, you can get it. You get all advantage by Krishna. If you want to become a demon, Krishna will supply you. All right, you become a demon, take whatever you want from me, he will give you. Similarly, if you want to become a demigod, a devotee, Krishna will supply you. All the necessities. Now it is my choice whether I shall become a demon and whether I shall become a devote. This is my choice. Krishna is equal to everyone. Samohaṁ sarva-bhūteṣu. Otherwise, how is God? If He is partial to somebody, 
then he is not God. He must be equal. He is equal to the devotee and non-devotee. Whatever the non-devotees want, Krishna supplies. And whatever the devotees want, Krishna supplies. But he is very much pleased with the devotee. Therefore, his supplies are very immediate. And the demonic supply, that will depend on his work, karma. It will depend on the karma. And devotee supply, because this is bhakti, it is immediately there. That is the difference. Krishna says that. Jetu bhajanti man pritya te mai. There are millions of living beings. Some of them are devotees, and many of them are non devotees. So Krishna is kind to the non-devotees also. Whatever he wants, he'll give it. But the necessities of the devotee is the first consideration for Krishna. Jitu bhajanti maang pritya te mai. That is Krishna's. As the devotee is only searching the opportunity how to serve Krishna, Similarly, Krishna is also very eager to serve the devotee. That is a reciprocation of devotional service. Now it is our choice whether we want to become a devotee or whether we want to remain a demon. That is my choice. Krishna says that you give up this demonic engagement and surrender to me. That is Krishna's desire. But if you do not agree with Krishna's desire, if you want to enjoy your own desire, then also Krishna is also pleased, he will supply you the necessities. But that is not very good. We should agree to Krishna's desires. We should not allow our desires, demonic desires, to grow. That is called tapasya. Our desires we should sacrifice. That is called sacrifice. We should only accept Krishna's desire. That is the instruction of the Bhagavad Gita. Arjuna's desire was not to fight. But Krishna's desire was to fight. That is the opposite. Arjuna ultimately agreed to Krishna's desire. Yes, Karishya Vachananda. Yes. I will act according to your desire. That is bhakti. This is the difference bhakti and karma. Karma means to fulfill my desires, and bhakti means to fulfill Krishna's desire. That is the difference. Now you make your choice. Whether you want to make your desires fulfilled, or if you want to make Krishna's desire full. If you make your decision to make Krishna's desire fulfilled, then your life is success. That is your Krishna conscious life. Krishna wants it, I must be. I will not do anything for me. That is Vrindavan. All the inhabitants of Vrindavan, they are trying to fulfill Krishna's desire. The cowherd's voice, the calf's the cows, the trees, the flowers, the water, the gopis, the elderly inhabitants, Mother Jasuda, Nanda, they are all engaged in fulfilling Krishna's desire. That is Vinda. So you can turn this material world into Vrindavan, provided you agree to fulfill the desires of Krishna. That is Vinda. And if you want to fulfill your own desires, that is material. This is the difference between material and spiritual. The same thing, this house, this house is a house, and the next door is a Kormi's house, and this house is a temple. You know, what is the difference? The difference is in this house, Everyone is engaged to fulfill Krishna's desire. And the other house, everyone is engaged in fulfilling his own desire. 
Therefore, it is temple and that is house. Otherwise, from the external feature, where is it defined? The same stone, the same wood, the same plant, the same land, the same kitchen, everything is same. And the business is the same. But here, the business is to satisfy Krishna. And the other house says, the business is to satisfy one's own senses. That is the difference between calm and prem. When you try to fulfill the desires of Krishna, that is prem. And when you want to fulfill your own desires, that is called calm. That's no other. Just like the gopis, the gopis are going to Krishna, being captivated by the beauty of Krishna. Just a young girl becomes captivated by seeing a very nice boy, or a nice boy is captivated to see the beauty of a girl. These are sense gratification. There is no prayer, there is calm. But the gopis, they are going to Krishna. Superficially, the same thing, like the young girls are going to a young boy. But they are going for Krishna's satisfaction, not for their own satisfaction. That is the sublime. That gopis are so held in estimation even by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Brahma kachi dupasana brajabadhu bhargavija kali. There is no better type of upasana, varsi. Then it was conceived by the gopis. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu admitted. The, the topmost method of worshipping Krishna is the type of worship offered by the gopis. Topmost. Gopi bhavarasam tabdhilahari kallola magno maho bandi rupa sanatana lagujigo sri jiva gopa. The Gotsamis are always thinking of the gopi's service to Krishna. Gopi bhavara samrita adhi. So now the two things are there, the divine characteristic and the demonic characteristic. Both of them are there. Now you have to select which one, which one you want. If you actually want to love Krishna, then take this divine characteristic. There is no cause of helplessness. Eh? Just like amanitam, here it is said, dhamma, adammittam, adammittam, without any dhamma. Here it is said, abhayam sattva samsiddhi jnana juva avasthiti. So you can practice this. That is devotional life. You have to practice this. If you want to be divine, your characteristic. The following is a class on the Bhagavad Gita as it is. Sixteenth chapter, text number five. Given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Recorded on January 31st, 1975 in Honolulu, Hawaii. Transcendental qualities are conducive to liberation, whereas the Madhya qualities make for bondage. Do not worry, O son of Pandu, for you are born with divine qualities. Devi Sampad Vimakshaya Nivandhaya Suri Mata Masucha Sampadang Devim Abhijata Si Pandam. This is very important verse. Devi Sampad, the qualities, divine qualities, that is described, Avayam Sattva Samsuddhi, that is elaborately stated in the first stanza. <coughs> Avayanga Sattva Samsuddhi Jnana Yuga Bhavasthiti Dhanang Damascha Jagascha Sadhaya Tapasastha Jivam Ahimsha Sattva Kruda Satyam Akruda 
त्याग शांति अपरिशन दया भूतेशु अलोलुप्त आत्म पी अचापन तेज क्षमा दिथि शौचम अद्रोह नाथि मानिता भवंती संपदम दैवीम दीजादी दैवी संपद <coughs> तो ये लास्ट टाइम टू हैव डिस्कस दैट दैवी संपद इज डिस्क्राइब देयर इज नथिंग सीक्रेट एवरीथिंग इज ओपन सो If you develop these qualities, abhayam satta samsiddhi etc., then you become qualified with divine uh, possession, sampatti. Sampatti means what you possess under your control. So sampatti, two kinds of sampatti: divine sampatti. And divine, demonic sampatti. <coughs> demonic sampatti also described. Dhammada pravimana cha krodha parusameva cha agyanam cha vijata cha partha sampadam asu. From Osura, the adjective is asurim. So asurim and dhari. Two sampatis are there. They are open before you. Now you take up whatever you like. It is up to you. It is not forbidden that devi sampatti is meant for a class of men, and asuri sampatti is meant for another class of men. No. Krishna is open to everyone. Krishna is not monopolized by a certain class of men. Don't think like that. If Krishna is Indian, Krishna is Hindu, or like that, a Chhatri. Therefore, he is meant for others. No, because he is the supreme personality of Godhead. He is everyone's property. He is not. Don't think in that way. Just, just like it is stated in the English dictionary, Krishna, one of the Hindu gods. But Krishna does not say that I am the Hindu god. <laughs> they are made in the dictionary. Krishna, one of the Hindu gods. They have no knowledge about Krishna. Krishna says, "Ah, Sarvajoni Shukante." In all species of life, there are eight million. Four hundred species of life. Jalajana, Lokani, Sabra, Lokavimshati. Nine lakh species in the water, and trees and plants. There are two million species. Similarly, insects. Sabra, Lokavimshati. Jalajana, Lokani, Sabra, Lokavimshati. Kirimaya, Rudra, Sankhata. Eleven lakh species. Uh, one million, one hundred thousand species of insects, serpents, snakes, like that, uh, gradually developing from water, fish to as the water dries up, then they come out as as grass, as vegetable, then grow different types of trees, plants, creepers. Then gradually develops to become insects, uh, flies. Then develops to serpents. In this, this is evolution. The Darwin theory, he does not know. He has caught up some words from this Padma Purana and tried to give his own invention. The evolution is already there, but this is evolution from aquatics to plants, trees, then insects. Then bird, then beast, then human being, civilized and not civilized, then demigods, then others. That is the evolution is born. So Krishna says that sarva joni shu kante ya samhavanti mukta ya ja. All kinds of forms that are coming out of the eight million four hundred thousand species of life. 
tasang mahajanik brahma ahanga bija padapita. And the seed giving father and the material body is given by the material nature. Just like father gives the seed, impregnates the mother, and the mother supplies the body. The body belongs to the mother, and the spirit soul belongs not to the Supreme Father, but it comes through the material father. Actually, the Supreme Father is Krishna. Therefore he says, Ahaga Vija Pudapita. The Krishna is for everyone. Krishna is not monopolized. This is a wrong theory. He is a Hindu God. No. He is for everyone. Otherwise, how you Americans, Europeans and other outside India, how you are accepting? Because originally Krishna is your father. Everyone's father. All living, not only you, but the animals, the trees, the plants, the insects, the serpent, the aquatic, the fish, everyone, the son of Krishna. This is Daivishampa. Therefore, when you come to the Daivishampa, then you understand that we all our brothers, universal brothers. Not that the American is my brother, and the American cows are not my brother. Let them go to this ladder. This is all defective understanding. The real understanding is, and the God or Krishna, the Supreme Father, and we are all sons of God. This is real understanding. Pandita. That is real knowledge. Uh, therefore, those who are in real knowledge, samadarsina, pandita samadarsina, vidyavinaya sampanni, brahmani, gavi, hastini, suni cheta sapakecha, pandita samadarsina. Pandit, one pandit, one who is learned, pandit means learned, and he knows that this American, this European, this African, or this Indian, or these cows, these dogs, and the elephant, the trees, the plants, the fish, they have got different race only, but the soul is the same. The living force within the body, that is the same particle, spiritual particle, part and parcel of the Supreme Spirit, Krishna. This is Daivism. So when we come to this platform of knowledge, Daivism, Dimaksaya, then you become liberated immediately. Liberation means to come to the platform of real knowledge. That is called liberation. Uh, that is the definition given in the Srimad Bhagavatam. What is liberation? Mukti. And he said, Mukti hitya anatha rupam sarupena avasthiti. Hitya means giving up. Mukti means hitya, giving up. Hitya uh, anatha rupam, something otherwise. I am spirit soul, I am thinking I am American, I am thinking I am Indian. This is anatha rupam. That is not the real conception of life. The real conception of life is aham brahmasmi. I am the spirit soul, part and parcel of Krishna. That is realization. That is called self-realization. <coughs> Self-realization does not mean something humble. Self-realization means to understand his real constitutional position, what I am. Just like Sanatana Goswami approached Srila Gaurasana, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he asked 
किया मी हु किया मी कैन मरे जाफे ताप थ्रॉ वॉट इज माई कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल पोजिशन वाई आई एम सफरिंग द थ्री फोल्ड मिजरीज ऑफ दिस मेटीरियल इमेज दिस इज एन्क्वायरी एवरी वन इज सफरिंग समबडी इज इन इग्नोरेंस ऑल दो ही इज सफरिंग ही इज थिंकिंग दैट ही इज वेरी वेल दिस इज कॉल्ड माया माया मीन्स यू आर एक्सेप्टिंग समथिंग विच इज नॉट दिस इज कॉल्ड माया माया what you are accepting there is false this is karma so you are accepting i am this body i am american i am indian i am christian i am hindu i am black i am white i am thin i am fat so this is maya ah so when we give up this maya conception of life that is mukti you may remain in the same body but if you are not under maya bodily concept of life that is called mukti liberation therefore it is said devi sampad vimokhaya moksha moksha means liberation if you develop this devi sampad then you become fit for becoming liberated Because our, what is the position? Why you are suffering? Why you are dying? Why you are taking birth? Why you are becoming old? Uh, on account of this material body, uh, this is knowledge. Jnana boi rag, jnana boi rag jukthaya, jnana and boi rag. These things are required. That is daiva sampad. Uh, all the daiva sampad means gyan jugo. It is immediately there. Abhayam sattva samshuddhi gyan jugam avasthiti. This this is possible when you are situated on the platform of knowledge. Uh, this is knowledge. That I am spirit soul. I am falsely identifying myself with this body. The body is the source of my all suffering and entanglement. This is not it. Then, when we uh, try to give, give up the ignorance, a bodily concept of life, then we become gradually liberated. First of all, abhayam. Abhayam means we are always afraid. Uh, we are always agitated, uh, anxiety, because I am thinking I am this body. But if you are completely realized that you are not this body, you are something else, spirit soul, uh, then I am immediately free from anxieties. That is called avayam. Uh, no more fear, no more anxiety, because everyone is ultimately afraid of being killed. But if he understands fully that he is not this body, then kill or not kill, he is not any uh, attached to this body. Narottam Das Thakur says that for. देह स्मृति नहीं जा संसार बंधन कहाँ का इफ वन बिकम्स फ्री फ्रॉम द बॉडीली कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ लाइफ देन वेर इज मेटीरियल मिजरीज मेटीरियल मिजरीज डज नॉट एफेक्ट हिम ही नोज दैट जब टाइम आई एम पुटिंग ऑन दिस आर्ट इफ इट इज स्टोर So am, am I affected? I am not affected. I am within this chart. Similarly, if I am fully convinced that I am not this body, then if there is some injury or some disease or some mishap in the body, I am not 
concerned, because I know that I am not this body. That is self-realization. Uh, the demands of the body, eating, sleeping, sex life and defense, this is the demands of the body. But if I am situated in self-realization, then these demands will not bother me. Uh, there are many persons who are not agitated by hunger, uh, who are not agitated, not having opportunity of sleeping. They don't sleep. Nidrahāru vihārakādi vijito about the Goswāmis it is said that these, thi- these things, material demands of the body, sleeping, eating, sex and defense, they are the demands of the body. But how they become Goswāmī or Śāmī? Because they are not affected by this demand. That is Goswāmī, that is Śāmī. Śāmī means master. Goswāmī means master of the senses. Say, if I am servant of the senses, how I can become Goswāmī? How I can become Śāmī? That is false, hypocrisy. If you are servant of the senses, then you are go das. Das means servant, and go means senses. And if you are master of the senses, then you are go sami. Every word has meaning. Uh, so without being fit, we should not use this word as personal designation. That is not good. Uh, so, uh, mukti means, that is mukti, when we are not servant of the dictation of the sense, that is called mukti. So long we remain servant and obliged to perform according to the dictation of the senses, then I am godas and the material field. Uh, godas are under the spell of the material energy, uh, servant of the material energy. Devidji, Sāguna, Mahimava, the māyā, the prakriti is dictating. Prakite kriyamānāni, gunai karmāni sarvasa. Dictating means you voluntarily become subjected to the dictation of this material nature. See, cannot dictate if you are strong. But if you agree that I shall be dictated by you, then you become dictated. Just like a disease, if you infect the disease, then you must suffer. But if you remain very fit, competent, not to be infected by the germs of the disease, you are not disease. This is the way. And that is stated in the Bhagavad Gita that our different types of body desires, activities are due to our being infected by the particular quality of material nature. Uh, <coughs> perfected quality. There are three qualities, satagon, rajagon, tamagon. If you want to be infected by the tamagon quality, then you are suffering the infectious disease, of tamagon. Uh, tamagon means nidra alasya, ignorance, and sleeping more, laziness, and uh, alasya. Alasya laziness, nidra means sleeping, and ignorance. Just like cats and dogs, they do not know what is the aim of life, what they are doing. Uh, this is tamagon. And rajagon, means activities, uh, for sense enjoyment. So Rajagon, just like the Kurmis, they are working hard day and night. What is the purpose? Sex. That's all. Why you are working so hard, sir? I will enjoy sex at night. <laughs> this is my ambition. Oh, very good ambition. This ambition as the dogs also have got. So why you are working so hard? 
No, that is my ambition. That's all. I am less than dog. Dog gets opportunity of sex life in the street without any working hard. But I will have to work hard to enjoy the same thing. So I am less than dog. One should admit that. That I am less than dog. Dog gets sex life without any. Vishaya Kalu Sarvata Sya. Shastra says Vishaya. Vishaya means the sense enjoyment. The primary sense enjoyment is eating, sleeping, sex life, and defense. So where there is want of these four facilities, the birds have got these facilities, the beasts, the, for sex life, the birds and bees, they have got automatically uh, two birds are born, two eggs, one male, one female, from the very beginning. We are also born, brother and sister, but human society does not allow sex between brother and sister. As still, is still formality is there. But that is also going on. Human life is advanced. Uh, that is going on. In India, one Punjabi, uh, their father was anxious to get his daughter married. And the the brother uh, wrote the father, my dear father, don't go bother about my sister and Mary. We have arranged ourselves, brother and sister. You see? So sex life is so strong. Although socially it is forbidden that uh, brother and sister should not marry or should not have sex life. But that is also come. It is collision. Uh, so that that sex life facility is there automatically by nature. Uh, so why there is forbidden? Not this sex life, not that sex life we forbid. No illicit sex. Uh, without marriage there is no sex. Then one may argue, what is the difference, married sex and uh, not married sex? The business is the same. No, there is some meaning. Uh, these restrictions are made to bring him to the position of the daivi sampa sattva-saṅśuddhi. Uh, the purpose is to bring him to the platform of Devi Sampa. If he becomes like cats and dogs, then he cannot attain this Devi Sampa. If there is rules and regulation and restriction following, then gradually he will come to the platform of Devi Sampa. And what is the purpose of Devi Sampa? Devi Sampa Vimaksaya. If you develop your Devi Sampa, then you become fit for Vimaksaya. Or liberation. What is that liberation? Liberation means janma mitta jarabhadi. Liberation from these four things. No more birth, no more death, no more disease, no more old age. So people are unaware and they are not interested. What is vimokshaya, what is nibandhaya? Exactly like cats and dogs. They are after these four principles of material body. Uh, so this Krishna consciousness movement is trying little bit. Success or no success does not matter. As we are servant of Krishna, it is our duty to present the real thing. Now we accept, not accept, that is not my business. I can request you that you accept this principle and be liberated from this sufferings of material life. Janma mitu But they have become callous. Uh, never mind, I shall again take my bath, again die, I shall become dog. Uh, in this Hawaii sometimes I was speaking in the university 
So the when I was speaking like that, one student said, What is wrong there if I become dog? Yes. He fled, he said. I shall forget everything. So this is the university education. That one is not afraid of becoming a dog. He thinks that this is also very good. So where is the humanity? Where is the human civilization? People have gone so downtrodden, so fallen. Therefore, it is very, very difficult to raise them. Uh, therefore, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, and this Hastra said, that people in this age are so fallen, it is very difficult to raise them by properly giving education. They will not take education, they will not be able. Uh, therefore, he has a comment that Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Iva Kevala, Kalo Nasi, Iva Nasi, Iva Nasi. So, we are trying our best. So, only request is those who uh, do not comply with our rules and regulations, at least they may chant Hare Krishna. Where is what is this? If you have made his horseless carriage, you don't know. Uh, that is not advancement. It is advancement, but it is not the solution of the problem. The solution of problem is human life is to uh, how to stop that. Uh, that was Hastra said that nobody should become guru, nobody should become father, nobody should become husband. In this way there is a need. Namo chaitya samupita mrittum. If one cannot help his student or his son or his subordinate uh, uh, to stop death. Uh, actually this is the problem. Namo chayadja samupriya mrittu. We are under the clutches of death. It is as sure as death. Uh, so this human life is meant for stopping this death. Uh, but if you don't see that this is the problem, that is our gyan. That is ignorance. If you don't accept, this is the problem. If you simply think, my problem is how to eat, how to sleep, how to have sex life, how to defend, these, the, the, these problems are already solved, even by of the birds and the bees. These are the, not the problem. They are already set up. A real problem is here. Janma mittu jarabbeli dukkho lusanu jarsanam. Another problem is ashapti. We are very much attached to our so-called home, so-called wife, children. And here is a gyan myth that asapti uh, ranavish sangha. Asapti. He should be. Yeah. Therefore, at a certain age, according to Vedic civilization, one is forced to give up this attachment. Naturally, one is attached to wife, children, home. But the Vedic civilization says that is our life. Wrong. Up to fifty years, you can remain attached. But panchasodham banam vade. After your fiftieth year, you must give up your family life. Banam vade. Go to the forest for tapasya. That was the system. Here at the present moment, everywhere, all over the world, uh, when he is going to die, he still he is attached to his political life, social life, family life. Uh, that is not knowledge, that is ignorance. Uh, he must be detached. Vairāgyam, anabhishyaṅga, putradhāra grihādhish, family life. Putra means children. Uh, Dara means wife, griha means home. Putra-dāra-gihādi-śu, asakti ranavishyaṅga, nittaṅca samacittattam istyānishtam papatti In this way you have to situate, you have to be situated on the devotional service. Devotional service is not sentiment. Just like Krishna, after describing so many stages of advancement of knowledge, then he says, 
मई चा अनन्न जोगे ना भक्ति रब्दा विचारी अनन्न जोगे ऑलवेज जोगा में लिंकिंग आप ऑलवेज लिंकिंग आप विथ कृष्णा मई कृष्णा सेज मई एंड टू मी कृष्णा मई चा अनन्न जोगे ना भक्ति जोगे तो यू कैन बी अटैच्ड विथ कृष्णा इफ यू हैव डॉक्टर इन द सर्विस ऑफ कृष्णा not casually but constantly mai cha ananna joge na bhakti joge na abhyavichari abhyavichari ni me without break all is constant satatam kirtan tamam jatan tashchan divabrata in another place krishna says satatam kirtan tamam all is glorifying me and this is krishna consciousness Unless we have to glorify Krishna, we should go meet people, preach, and glorify Krishna. Uh, we beg for Krishna. We print books for Krishna. We distribute books for Krishna. We type for Krishna. We eat for Krishna. We sleep for Krishna. Uh, uh, so everything should be adopted with Krishna. That is called ananna yogi. Without any Break constantly, twenty-four hours in Krishna consciousness. Abhyagi chari, vivikta desha sevitam arati jana samshadi. Arati jana samshadi. Not very much a task with general public because they are not Krishna consciousness. We can meet them as far as possible, as far as required. Not that we have to. Sit down and talk all nonsense with these general people. No, or a thing or a something. A vivita desu se vivita. Naturally, we shall be inclined to avoid such company. But preaching war, we have to go, not to associate with him, but to give your association to him. That's the principle. Because you have learned something about devotion and service. You should give your experience to such person, but not to accept their behavior. If you keep this in view, then you will be preacher. And if you become victimized by his association, then you are doomed. You should give him the opportunity of your association, whatever you know, whatever you have learned about bhakti yoga. When you go to meet a person, you should try to inform him. This is Krishna consciousness. He wants to take to it. That Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Jare that who tare kaho Krishna, kaho Krishna kaho. Krishna bodhi. Jare that who tare kaho Krishna bodhi. This is the idea. Adhyatma gyanam nityatam spiritual knowledge. That is eternal knowledge. It will not break. If you learn spiritual knowledge. A little of it in this life. Sarva vyasya dharma sutrayate mahato bhaya. Then you will be saved from the greatest danger. Sattva jnana artha darshana. If you want to become philosopher, then you philosophize for understanding the tattva jnana. And what is tattva jnana? Vadanti tat tatta vidas tattyam jadgyana madhyam brahmeti paramatmeti bhagavani ti sandhya. That is tattva jnana. True. What is that true? Brahmeti paramatmeti bhagavani ti. To understand about Brahma, to understand about Paramatma, to understand about the Supreme Personality of God, that is tattva jnana. Thank you very much.